Call this meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The clerk will now call the roll. Councilmember Porter. Present. Councilmember Middleton. Present. Councilmember Kavanaugh. Present. Councilmember Dundon. Present. Councilmember Costi. Present. Councilmember Hotchkiss. Present. Council President Madovetsky. Present. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> Reports from committees and approval of minutes. So we'll be uh, begin with the approval of the minutes from business meeting on March 27th. Um, do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second? Second. Second. Okay. Motioned by Councilman Dundon, seconded by Councilman Middleton. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. I'll now move on to reports from committees. Uh, Chair of Finance Committee Kavanaugh, do you have a motion or do you have any uh, anything to report? We have a meeting tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I'll report back next meeting. Thank you. Um, uh, Councilman Hotchkiss, Chair of Planning, do you have anything to report? I also have a planning meeting tomorrow. I think the last uh, planning committee meeting, we were reviewing plans from the First Word Action Council uh, about a, a development project for 37 units. There, we're putting together the remaining funds from... Uh, I don't want to say the acronym wrong, but um, some remaining funds are being collated to help support their application for um, state funding to support that project. That's that's the main thing that's happening with that. Um, tomorrow, we're discussing the One North Depot project um, and some more stuff with the First Board Action Council. Thank you. Um, and then we go to... Councilman Porter, Chair of the Employees Committee. Do you have anything to report? Not at this time. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Middleton, Chair of Municipal and Public Affairs. Do you have anything to report? Uh, no, nothing. Not at this time. Uh, Councilman Dundon, Chair of Public Works. Do you have anything to report? No, not at this time. And back to Councilman Hotchkiss, Chair of Rules and uh, Procedures Committee. Do you have anything to report? There's going to be a meeting on the 22nd to go over some legislation that was submitted by Kenny Brown. Um, that's all. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have no appointments to announce this evening. So we'll move on to uh, setting a public hearing. We have a public hearing that need that we'll need uh, to set for our next. Excuse me. Oh. Uh, Madam President, do you want to go over any of the uh, like Bureau of Water Street Development, different those things in that committee report or no? I was having a conversation with our, our clerk about that, um, about adding the words and boards there. So, um, yes, I had intended to have us have that in the in, in the section. This language from our agenda comes from the, the charter. Um, so I'm hoping to... Uh, add that in. Let me confer with Corporation Council if it's okay for us to add that into the agenda. If someone would like to motion to amend the agenda to do a board report, um, I would be accepting such a motion. I make a motion to amend the uh, agenda to allow for board reports. I second. Okay. All right. Uh, it was motioned by Councilman Hotchkiss, seconded by Councilman Porter, right? Okay. Um, so we are uh, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Uh, Councilman Hotchkiss, if you would like to give a board report. 
Sure. I'm going to going to run through these quickly, um, but I think this is a, a good for communication. The Water Street Development Corporation, uh, things are winding down and they're going to be moving money from that entity back into the city to help finish the funding of the uh, parking garage on Water Street. Um, and then I believe the entity will then be dissolved in a legal sense. Um, then going on to Bureau, the Binghamton Urban Renewal Agency, uh, I finished a training and I'm all certified for that this morning. And I think there's not too much activity happening there. Um, I want to okay, get another board that I go to is the sewage treatment plant. And I think there's um, a couple of things I wanted to bring back to this. They are, there's going to be a um, pretty large bond ordinance that we'll be looking at for the uh, TPS system, and that's uh, a large piece of infrastructure, and it's been, it's very outdated, and it's going to be pretty expensive. I think, uh oh, um, they're going out to bid for that project, but it's going to be between I think like three to six million dollars um, to, and that that's the piece that keeps getting um, gummed up with all the the flushable wipes that aren't flushable and it's like it's not a good situation so i'm glad that that's being addressed but it is uh pretty expensive um they're working another thing that i think is great they're working on a five-year plan um and that's going to be part of their like comprehensive plan for the whole board. that's just good planning and it's encouraging to see them do it and i think that that's going to help support um our, our moves to require that for other departments here in the city. Uh, the last thing was that I, the Chuck, our comptroller, discovered that there is something like $17 million error with their budgeting that is around depreciation expenses. Uh, and I thought that was worth bringing back to you all. So um, be on the lookout for information on that. And I think that's something that we should bring up in the finance committee meeting. So that's all. Thank you, Councilman Hotchkiss. I guess we'll go around. Councilman Kavanaugh, any board reports? Sure. Uh, from Binghamton Local Development Corporation, um, our previous meeting uh, was the presentation and kind of the board digesting the uh, annual report. Uh, which is available on the city website if you'd like to take a look. Uh, some highlights from that uh, are the uh, <clears throat> uh, the business plan competition, of course, which uh, went off pretty successfully last year and is underway again this year. Uh, the facade grant uh, program, which uh, uh, they were able to not turn anyone away. So they uh, accommodated... Um, uh, all the projects coming in and then from money that was not quite used up uh, at least you know at least have have a uh, have another pile of, of people they're working working through and i think uh um that was rather widely regarded as quite successful so there'll be uh, uh, uh figuring out a way hopefully to refund uh, to replenish that fund uh, to continue um it's it has some uh, it's been having some very nice impacts on on uh, the business districts around um <clears throat> That's the uh, it was kind of the major uh, part of that meeting, and then uh, Cod uh, has a variety of uh, individual projects they're looking at, um, you know, individual approvals. Uh, but the uh, kind of big, pre the two kind of uh, larger presentations um, were, were uh, the uh, consideration of a for a public art element uh, that's being proposed for the tunnel uh, uh, by Confluence Park or under under the bridge at Confluence Park, uh, which may also include a, a public uh, bulletin board space. We haven't had anything like that in Binghamton since the old uh, cube in front of the federal building came down. So that's kind of an interesting thing to be thinking about. But uh, the the mural portion is pretty cool. Um, so hopefully that will be moving forward. And then we had a presentation on the uh, Deco District which is the kind of extension of all of the elements and streetscaping and uh, landscaping that went on on State Street the last couple of years, extending that toward uh, uh, this phase, I think it's Washington Street and Henry Street and uh, getting that built up uh, to match and uh, um, also uh, taking some uh, serious consideration some some of the, uh, the needs of uh, the local businesses down there, particularly the cafes and stuff that want to maintain some of the outdoor space they gained um, 
during the the pandemic that's been valuable for them. So a lot of elements there. Um, COD, uh, as just a note, um, COD has been uh, having uh, arm issues for various reasons. Uh, so we may be looking to try and expand uh, uh, the number of people on COD or creating alternates like uh, planning that has, something like that. That's it. Thank you, Councilman Kavanaugh. Councilman Middleton, any board reports? Um, CDAC, we're in our last um, final, uh, th it's budget time. So uh, there was the last last week on Wednesday, um, they're starting the budget um, for CDAC. And then this coming Wednesday, we'll still be going over uh, stuff for the budget. So that's all from, for CDAC. Thank you. Councilman Porter, any boards and commission reports? Nope. Uh, no, I'm not at okay. this time. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Dundon? I don't sit on any boards. Did you observe any of the um, contracts or? Not that I've seen lately, so I'm waiting. Um, I got some questions for the Finance Committee tomorrow. Okay. And Councilman Costi is just about to start on multiple uh, boards and commissions. Um, as a minor, minority representative. Um, uh, so for me, I sit on the traffic board. Um, we, are, I want to encourage people and make sure they're aware that you can submit through a form to get on the traffic board agenda if you are interested in any traffic issues in your neighborhood. Um, I was on traffic, uh, the traffic board agenda for last meeting and um, successfully got... Um, some no parking signs moved from one side of the street to the other side of the street um, so that mail can get delivered to people who were unable to get their mail previously. Um, so literally, if there is something that is traffic related, you can submit online. There's also public comment at the traffic board meetings. That said, tomorrow's traffic board meeting was um, canceled by the chair. So the next meeting won't be until May. Um, the other... Uh, the commission, the environmental commission uh, has their first meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Broome County Public Library. If you are interested in getting to see what's going on there um, and uh, that's that's my board and uh, board and commission updates. OK, so uh, moving on. Um, setting a public hearing. We have a, a public hearing that we need to set for our next business meeting. The city of Binghamton will hold a public hearing regarding RL 24-71, a resolution authorizing the city of Binghamton to submit an application for funding from Empire State Development Corporation Restore New York Communities Initi Initiative Round 8. Um, this public hearing will take place at 6 p.m. during the April 24th, 2024 regular city council business meeting in City Council Chambers, 38 Holly Street, Binghamton, New York. Residents wishing to participate in public hearings may do so electronically by emailing their comments prior to 1 p.m. on the day of the meeting to clerk at cityofbinghamton.gov or in person during the meeting. So public hearing. We have um, one public hearing tonight regarding RL 24-17, an ordinance to amend chapter 408. 10 to address below grade amenity spaces in multiple unit dwellings. City residents are welcome to speak. You'll each have five minutes to discuss this particular request for legislation. As a reminder, this is not the time for general public comment. This is time allocated to just to speak on the particular proposal. We'll have regular public comment following this public hearing. So is anyone here to speak on RL 24-17, an ordinance to amend chapter 10 to address below grade amenity spaces in multiple unit dwellings. Okay. Okay, um, has the clerk received anything for public, the public hearing? Okay, great, so we'll do those after. Okay, uh, as there is no comment on that, uh, public hearing. Um, do I have a motion to close the hearing? I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second. Second. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, all right. So, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 
Um, we can now move on to public comment. Please be respectful. Each speaker will be given up to five minutes to address city council on city issues. Um, may the whoever's interested in coming to speak for general public comment, um, please come forward. Welcome. My name is Kenneth Brown. I'm a resident of the city of Binghamton. I'm going to start with my reminding my all of you of my invitation to answer questions regarding Michael Costi's appointment. I'm not going to focus on that today, but I just wanted to remind you that the invitation is open. I'm here to talk about the Palestine ceasefire resolution. I'm sure as most people are. Um, so a few things. That anyone that's been paying attention to the news since October 7th knows the Israeli government and the IDF are deliberately killing a large number of people from a particular nation with the aim of destroying that nation. And that's the exact definition of genocide, according to Oxford languages. It's hard to deny it. It's right there in front of our faces. It has been since October 7th. Obviously, October 7th was an attack in itself, but to pretend like it was the beginning of all of this is textbook revisionist history and an insult to every single person that has died under the occupation in Palestine since 1948. We hear all the time that calling out Israel for their actions is anti-Semitic. It's not anti-Semitic. It's anti-Zionist. And there's nothing anti-Semitic about anti-Zionism. That's an incorrect correlation and honestly just a propaganda piece. But we all know this is mostly symbolic, what you're doing. It's not actually going to have direct effect, except for the fact that it shows that you're willing to stand up and against the Israeli lobby, the Zionist lobby, anyone that is supporting this, these war crimes, war crimes after war crimes after war crimes. A ceasefire, permanent ceasefire is the only way because a pause is simply just a pause in a genocide. And a pause in a genocide is still a genocide. There needs to be people held accountable over there in our own government, anyone enabling this. And your vote can be one of many cities that show that the American people are fed up with this and we're not going to stand it anymore with our tax dollars being spent on this. Just recently, Biden wanted to send another $18 billion worth of fighter jets. Who are they going to get in an air fight with? It seems to be pretty clear what they're going to be used for. And if anyone denying it is in denial, and that's really about it, in my opinion. But the problem is, is it's not even, it's mainly the genocide that's occurring in the 30,000 plus people and the 10,000 plus children that have been slaughtered. But it's also now we are finally getting attention because as it usually works in these situations, people in the West don't really tend to care until it affects us. And then we saw that with the world central kitchen workers getting killed. People literally there just to feed people. Something I did a few weeks ago out of my driveway, if I did it over there, I'd be dead. And so many people who make excuses for Biden and make excuses for Netanyahu plotted what I did, but then make excuses for them killing these people doing something 10,000, 10 million times greater and in a much more dangerous place. And it... It shows the double standards. It shows the hypocrisy, and it's disgusting. And I mean, I'm, you're going to hear from hopefully 10, 20, 30 more people behind me. So I'm not just going to rattle off everything. Everyone else has something to say. But on the topic of food insecurity, I don't know how many people know, but on March 19th, the Broome County Health Department went to the bus station downtown, and they shut down the wagon train warriors, who are a group that just feed people. They went in there and they said, hey, guys, did you make this in a health inspected kitchen? If not, throw it in the trash because they can pick it out of there, but they can't take it out of your hands. How ungodly dehumanizing is that? And that's right here. In Binghamton, it wasn't the Binghamton government. It was the county government, but it happened within the city limits. I mean... The idea that you have to prepare a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or any type of meal, really, 
to give to someone is absurd because it flies in the face of picnics, barbecues, yeah, basically any family gathering. Are they showing up at your family reunions before you give your cousin some food? No. And it also falls in line with just six days ago, there was a news story talking about the no zero tolerance policy now impl implemented at the bus station because the bus station is a harbor for the homeless to be warm, to stay safe during the day. It's just an area. Obviously, there are issues with security, but you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't push everyone out just because there's a few issues. And that seems to be what the county's doing. And it seems that this prior movement of kicking the train, uh, was it the wagon train warriors out was a preemptive move because they knew that, oh, this is a place where they, these people that need food can come get food. And now it seems like they can't, but I will be going down there tomorrow. I, they can or put cuffs on me. I don't care. That's just better press. But they, I'm going to go down. I'm going to hand out sandwiches. Anyone's welcome to join. It's just peanut butter and jelly sandwiches tomorrow. Nothing crazy. Maybe in the next few days we can get something bigger put together. I've been in contact with one of their members. They might have a few people down there. They're telling people tonight because people deserve to eat. And not, have, let's not forget that. You have 30 seconds left. Thank you. Kidding. Let's not forget that that building is a government building. It's not private property. It's owned. You can go online. You can look at the parcel mapper. It's owned by the the DP, Groom County DPW. That's taxpayer property, just like the library, just like the sidewalk. They deserve to be able to be there because there's nowhere else because this county, and I mean, hopefully it gets better now under city council, this new city council, but this former city council just didn't care. And they caused the problem, and now they want to brush it under the rug. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak at public comment? Please come on down. Welcome. Is it working? Um, my name is Orrin Levy. I'm a um, Broome County um, resident. All right. Uh, right now, around the world, there are multiple active wars where the death toll far surpasses the Israel-Hamas war. Why are people only protesting against Israel right to self-defense? One, one, one pause. We have, yeah, we have to specify if you live or work in the city of Binghamton. I don't. Um, oh, yeah, I do work. Oh. Uh, City residents only. Oh, they're usually first. Sure. Okay. Right. Thank you. Is there any City of Binghamton residents that are interested in speaking? Thank you. Come on down. Oh, Tark's Tark's up here. Okay. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Hi, my name is Tark Abdelzim. I'm apparently an ass. Um, I hope folks take a chance to read the resolution. I think you all did a fantastic job writing it. I mean, it's hard not to be a humanitarian and be opposed or to, to be opposed to this. So folks should read it. No matter your faith against anti-Semitism, uh, Islamophobia, support for all lives. So you did a very balanced approach. And I think this is just us recognizing that war is horror for all involved and that we need to bring an end to it. So thank you for that. I'll let the others speak to it. Um, I certainly support it. I was a little confused at the work session when you had Chuck Shager down here, who's the city's uh, comptroller. And he said that the ARPA allocation was overspent 700,000. Was that about right? Okay, that is um, financial mismanagement in a very egregious form. Uh, I know that because I worked for the city. I built, uh, helped implement the Munis financial system citywide that dramatically improved city finances. There are protocols in place that you cannot overspend budget lines. Over time, yes, right? All of those can be overspent. Utilities, you guessed wrong. 
You could overspend those. You still have to move funds around. But capital lines or grant lines should be locked. They can't go past zero. And the only way to expend funds is to introduce a resolution to you all for approval. It goes to two people, three people. It goes to the lawyer's office. Is this legal? They sign on to it. It goes to the finance director. Is there money available in this line? He signs off on it. And then it goes to the mayor. So why did Chuck Shager sign off on $700,000 of requests when the money wasn't there? Like he just mentioned that as like, oh, yeah, just standard business. Um, so I hope you all hold him accountable. There are there is a housing crisis in this community. I think everybody knows that. There have been millions spent of ARPA funds to support some housing projects, which have been good. There have been millions spent in ARPA funds that have been horrible and have been incredibly negligent to the harms that workers families, children, seniors, employees, employers, all experience from COVID. Uh, it should not be uh, the question of whether there should be additional funds available for a couple of housing projects that were introduced to you, introduced by the only in the first Black-led affordable housing organization, the first affordable housing organization that is truly community-driven, the first affordable housing agency that will deliver permanent affordable housing units at significantly subsidized rents. You should not be denied the chance to approve funding that project because Chuck Shager screwed up. Find the money elsewhere. He needs to find the money elsewhere. And I truly hope that you support the two projects that were introduced by the fine folks that are trying to be a part of the solution to our housing crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else coming to speak to public comment? Come on down. If you welcome, if you want to make this go slightly faster, if you uh, want to use the chairs, if you want to be on deck for the next comment, that might be helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Ari Ullman. I live in Binghamton. I have friends and family in Israel. I've worked and lived in Israel. I'm a past president of the Beth David Synagogue and a past president of the Jewish Federation of Rome County. Uh, I'm shocked, dismayed, and immensely sad about the events that happened on October 7. Some of my Friends are still dislocated. They're living on the border with Lebanon. I'm equally shocked and dismayed about the thousands of deaths that have happened since then because of the war. Now, we may say elsewhere that happens too. The Uyghur in, in China, the in Myanmar, the Rohingya. Why do we care about that? These other wars cost more people. Well, in this war, we as a country and we as citizens are more directly involved, given the fact that the United States government has shipped and is shipping weapons to Israel by the billions. And we cannot, we should not ignore all these other wars, but it is perfectly justified that we raise our voices here and say, this is not the way we want our money spent. This has to change. And so, uh, a standstill of weapons, a cease of war is just a first step, we hope. Because after three months, if that resumes, things are not going to change. But we all have seen these pictures, and we have to raise our voice. We're a small city in a big country, but our voices count just like anybody else's in this country. So let's raise the, our voices and say, this has to stop. Thank you. Then next person up. And if there's other people that want to speak, just come 
continue to fill in the, the seats down here. Thank you. Hi, Welcome. Um, hi, my name's Corey. I'm a proud resident and hardworking member of the restaurant industry here in Binghamton. Um, I'm here to shed light. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, hi, my name's Corey. I'm a proud resident and hardworking member of the restaurant industry here in Binghamton. Um, I'm here to shed light on a pressing concern on the challenge of finding affordable housing in, on my income. It's a struggle that many in our community face daily. Affordable housing isn't just a wish, it's a necessity for folks like me trying to find and build a stable life. Um, I employ you prioritize solutions that make housing more accessible for all. Um, thank you for uh, your attention on this cru crucial matter. Thank you. Next person, welcome. My name is Levi Adams. I am a student at West Middle School here in Binghamton. I stand before you today because I want to talk to you about something really important, affordable housing. It's heartbreaking to see some of my classmates experience homelessness. It's not fair that anyone, especially kids like us, should have to worry about where they're, where they're going to sleep at night. Everyone deserves a safe and comfortable place to call home. Affordable housing isn't just about having a roof over your head. It's about having stability, security, and the opportunity to th thrive. When families don't have to go about worry about whether they can afford rent or mortgage, they can focus on other important things like education, their health, and their futures. By voting yes to affordable housing, you have the power to make a real difference in the lives of so many people in our community. You have the opportunity to show that Binghamton cares about each and every one of its residents, regardless of their income or circumstances. I urge you to please consider the importance of affordable housing and to vote yes. Together, we can make our city a better place. Everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay. And the next speaker, come on down. Welcome. My name is Blake. I'm a resident of Binghamton. I stand here today representing my family, including my partner and four children. Unfortunately, we're struggling to find suitable housing, forced to cram into a tiny apartment due to the lack of options. Our city needs more accessible housing choices to accommodate families like mine. It's time we ad address the pressing issue and work towards providing better living conditions for all residents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, welcome. Uh, my name is Jacob Weber, and I'm a proud resident of the city of Binghamton. I'd like to echo the concerns of the lack of affordable housing in the city, um, but also I'm Jewish. And when I was growing up, we learned both in my public grade school and in the Hebrew school I attended about the horrors of the Holocaust. The main question that we were posed was, how could this happen? How could an entire nation of people allow such grievous crimes to be committed against humanity and not do anything about it? The answer was regular people wanting to keep their heads down for fear of retaliation from the state and from the people who control it. And everyone in this room, both you city council members and the people here to speak their minds, have an opportunity to prevent a similar atrocity from occurring in Palestine. Israel's brutal genocide of Palestinians is an unparalleled crime against humanity. And while the bloodthirsty Zionists who run that country and who, who advance those interests in this country claim to speak for people like me, I'm here to say that Jewish people are not a monolith, that we stand against Israel's unjust genocidal treatment of Palestinians, and I am here using my voice as a Jewish person to urge the city council to adopt this resolution, to call for a ceasefire in Palestine, and to help put more pressure on the Biden administration to stop arming Israel and to stop protecting them on the world stage. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, come on down. Welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Caleb Deshaw. I'm a resident here in Binghamton, and I'm here today to express my support for the Palestinian ceasefire resolution. Don't worry, I'm going to keep this short. I have a degree in political science from the University of Albany, 
During my education, I developed a strong understanding of state structures and systems, specifically that of democracy, fascism, and capitalism. That being said, without a single doubt in my mind, Israel's actions towards Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank is nothing less than genocide. The very existence of Israel, an ethno-nationalist, militaristic autocracy propagandized as the coming of democracy in the Middle East, is absolutely illegitimate. The history of Israel follows the same path that has been paved by the rest of Western civilization, the path of colonization, the destruction of indigenous cultures and lives. If we and if we as Americans want to continue to claim that we believe in democracy, liberty, and human rights, we must take any action necessary to end this atrocity. I That was originally all I had, but after I heard uh, the man over there, uh, According to the Zionists wearing the curb your anti uh, anti Semitism hat that's sitting over there, ten thousand children's deaths isn't really that bad, right? There's been worse. That your inhumanity sickens me, and that's all that I have to say about that. Next up, welcome. Hi, I'm Amy. Um, I'm also a student here at Binghamton and an organizer. Um, I want to echo the concerns other people have um, raised about affordable housing. I really wanted to encourage the city council to do something about this, but like a lot of my other peers, I'm here to encourage the council to pass a resolution um, advocating for a ceasefire. Um, and I'm really here to speak because as a student, I have relative immunity. Um, I work at the American Civic Association, um, and out of a lot of my peers, I know the sort of work that the city council does. There's probably a good chance that you all have read something that I've submitted to city council um, through, you know, grants and whatnot. Um, and I'm really just here to commend the good work that the city council does. Um, obviously, if I didn't think that there were good things that the city council could do, I wouldn't be applying for grants. But I really wanted to emphasize my belief that um, all the good that the city council does, all the money that you all um, sort of give to certain orgs or policies that you all pass are useless if you can't stand up and say like that you are not in favor of a genocide, that you think that the murder of thousands and thousands of Palestinians is wrong and that we as a country are directly responsible for all the bloodshed that has been happening. Um, yeah, that's everything I had to say. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Yeah. Hello, my name. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, my name is Jim Clune. I'm a res long, lifelong resident of, of Binghamton. I want to, uh, uh, and I've, this is the third time I've come here to uh, urge, urge you to pass this resolution on a ceasefire. This became personal to me when I realized, when I looked back, when Ireland uh, criticized the the Israeli process, uh, conducting of this war, that my family came here in the 1850s because they were starving to death in in Ireland because of British imperialism because of British occupation. It's it's person it becomes personal to think about the fact that people starved to death and they starved to death not because not just because of potato potato blights but because of of government uh, inaction or terrible action. I wanted to say, the second thing I wanted to say was that I got the, got, caught the, uh, from the usual media presentation of what Palestinians are, they're either victims or terrorists. Well, it's not true. I went there. I visited with a peace delegation in 2010. I saw a lot of beautiful people among Palestinians in the West Bank. I saw a lot of beautiful Jewish people in various places. I saw a lot of good Christian people. These people can live with each other. They are making peace with each other. I saw it. 
the nonviolence of the of the in the villages, uh, such as Berlin that we visited. These are these are wonderful people. They many of them are making peace with each other. It's the governments that that are giving in in the way. And finally, and this thought occurred to me as I was sitting here waiting to to speak is I find it uh, ironic that we're talking that other people are talking about housing housing in the, in this in this city while our while our government supplies funds jet pl jet plane jet planes and and large 500 pound bombs to kill housing to blow up hospitals and universities and mostly housing and I say that's ironic, but it's also it makes it it also brings it right down to the nitty gritty of how we live our lives today. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Good evening. I'm a resident and employee in Binghamton City, and I'm originally from Windsor, New York, and now residing here. I was lucky enough to live overseas in the Middle East for many years. And I didn't I'm, catch your name. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Ellison Nowacki. And um, I have a background in international relations and Middle Eastern studies. So to quote my friend who I studied with, Nihal Lashari, where we are from, where we live is just an incident of fate. Sometimes we have the privilege to change that. Other times we are forced to. Other times still we have no such option, compulsion. We remain where we began for better or worse. And when where we remain becomes an untenable place, a violence place, we hope that someone somewhere else with all their incidents of fate sees us. Seeing becomes witnessing and to witness becomes an imperative. When that imperative becomes a call for action, we remember it could have been us hoping to be seen, but for an incident of fate. I quote her because these words explain the deepest truth and pains within my heart with perfect description and of why I beg you all to care. It was fate that I was born in Broome County. It was fate that I ended up back here living in Binghamton, despite not thinking when I left that I would ever return. I've come home and now share with those around me how visiting Palestine was the most consequential experience of my entire life. As a privileged Westerner, I was able to take a trip to the occupied lands, including the West Bank, walking through villages and cities whose family members could be living here in America and still never be allowed the opportunity to take those same steps or walk through the front door of homes that they still have keys to. We don't get shown the horrors of the apartheid our tax dollars pay for on American news or taught in our schools. We don't see the way the government treats them to quote themselves as human animals, as innocent people, including children, are arrested, tortured, humiliated, and killed every day. That is calm in Palestine before this genocide. For decades, we have watched a government turn the temperature up, hoping the world doesn't notice as they increasingly destroy the Palestinian people and identity with their bombs, guns, and prisons, achieving their dream of ethnic cleansing. All the while, our hard-earned tax dollars, our money we work for every day is the number one sponsor. Every year, the U.S. government writes Israel a blank check for at least $3.8 billion to fund their massive violence against the Palestinian people. Since October, Israel has murdered over 40,000 Palestinians in Gaza, including over 14,000 children with our tax dollars. This is genocide, and we are all paying the price of this genocide. In Binghamton, New York, 766,483 of our tax dollars that were given for Israel's weapons could have instead funded 91 households with public housing for a year. And I echo what everyone else has said about the need for public housing in our community. It could have funded instead 266 children receiving free or low cost health care. It could have funded instead eight elementary school teachers. It could have been funded instead 2,182 households with solar electricity for an entire year. And it could have instead canceled out the student loan debt of 20 students. 
Your children's education will be reflective of yours. What we learned in school of the horrendous colonial massacres and genocide of Native Americans on the Haudenosaunee Iroquois land on which we stand today, your children will also learn of this Made in America massacre. Except this time, you will have been an active participant. You can turn and look away, but it won't take the blood off your hands. For the sake of our history, our community, and the future world our children live in, I urge that you declare to choose humanity and that you stand for the oppressed in the face of injustice and massacre. And I urge you to support the resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Thank you. Uh, next. Welcome. I just want to start by saying this is an accessibility nightmare, and I'm really glad I'm off my crutches. Um, my name is Marsha Gates, and for the last 20 years, I have worked in, lived in, volunteered in, and occasionally protested in the streets of Binghamton. This is not my first time in front of city council. This is, however, the first time that I really felt like I was going to be heard, so thank you. Um, I'm speaking today on the Palestinian uh, ceasefire resolution. The numbers are staggering. Tens of thousands of Palestinians have been murdered over the last several months. Far too many Palestinian children have been murdered through bombings, rockets, gunfire, and starvation. According to Oxfam, the daily death rate in Gaza is higher than any other major 21st century conflict, with the Israeli military killing 250 Palestinians per day, with many more lives lost to hunger, disease, and cold. Palestine and the world at large is asking for a permanent ceasefire. Why should this matter to the Binghamton City Council? Because it matters to your constituents. The majority of Americans are behind a permanent ceasefire and communities across this nation are standing up to say, we stand for life. We stand for what's right. We stand against genocide. Over the last several months, the students who make up a large part of our downtown demographics and local community members have worked together and held increasingly large rallies and speakouts against this genocide, calling for a ceasefire. We've all seen the images. They're horrific. Babies clinging to life in hospitals running on generators with no supplies. Those same babies underneath the rubble of bombed out hospitals. And it's easy to sit here in the relative safety of the southern tier to say, that's happening over there. It's not our business. But it is our business. The world we live in, this life we lead, it's all interconnected. Voting yes today is largely symbolic. Palestine will not be free tomorrow just because we passed this resolution. But this show of support added to the many other communities standing up to say enough is enough will make a difference. Six months ago, we flipped this city council. We knocked on doors and every single voice counted. And in the sixth district, we could have used one more voice. We have the opportunity to be one more collective voice in the chorus across this country to say no to genocide. We flipped this council largely on the promise of truth and transparency. This council can make a stand here for truth. And the truth is that the Palestine people are being actively starved and actively murdered in an ongoing genocide. Israel has been caught out in egregious lie after lie not just about the continued murder of children and hospitals as targets, but also about the targeting of aid workers. A majority of this council got their start in community leadership through mutual aid. It was working with the houseless, feeding the hungry, collecting hygiene and feminine products that launched your community conscience and started you on the path to serving on this council. I have stood shoulder to shoulder with some of you, distributing food to the hungry, we have never asked for affiliation. We just fed the hungry. This is what aid workers do. Imagine doing that boots on the ground in the street work just to meet the business end of a rocket or be scooped up and tortured, waterboarded, beaten, have your families threatened for the aid you're providing. This is what Israel has done to UN Reliefs and Works Agency aid workers. Imagine if the greater good bus was targeted by a rocket and survivors were rescued in a church van to be targeted again a half mile down the road. Remaining survivors rescued again and shuttled down the road to be targeted again by a rocket one mile down the road. And for the aggressor to say, oopsie, that was an accidental strike three times. You would see it for the lie it is. You have one minute left. 
This is what happened with World Central Kitchen aid workers. Stand up and call it a lie. I am asking this council to stand up for truth and transparency as you vowed to do. I'm asking you to stand up for life. I'm asking you to affirm your commitment to the will of your constituents and vote yes on the ceasefire resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Before you start, as a point of order, can we be respectful of the speakers and uh, not not say any insults to them while they're talking? Thank you. That's okay. We're going to do it to them. Hi, my name is Terry. <laughs> and I, I will try not to, Nate. Um, I really only came here to say a couple of things. Yes, I know that the ceasefire resolution that we want you all to pass is largely just for show but it's a really really important show for the people that voted you to be here we want to make sure that you actually do have our interests at heart that you didn't just tell us what you thought you needed to tell us to get into the seat you are in i need you to vote for the ceasefire resolution because one of the things i've been hearing that just drives me crazy is calling this a war this is not a war. This is a genocide. A war, everybody has weapons on both sides. People fight in a war. This is not a war. This is an attack. It is a genocide. We are watching it happen. It needs to stop. That's really all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Good evening. Um, my name is Alec Walker Serrano. I'm a resident of Binghamton, New York, and I'm here to urge you, the members of this council, to support the resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. The human rights violations, destruction, and death in Gaza at the hands of Israel's military is unacceptable and it's abhorrent. Over 40,000 Palestinians are dead, over 14,000 of whom are children. Family homes, Entire blocks have been razed. Hospitals have been raided and destroyed. Palestinians are experiencing starvation due to the blockage of aid. This violence and destruction will continue unless somebody says something and somebody does something about it. And as a taxpayer, I'm disgusted that my own money is going to fund these atrocities. It's the imperative of all human beings to call out gross violations of human rights whenever they occur and wherever they occur. And it is also the imperative of those in power to use that power to protect those who are vulnerable and under attack. It doesn't matter what state is committing violations against humans, we need to call it out. I currently do advocacy work to fight for um, the safety of the lives of LGBTQ youth who are more susceptible to violence and suicide. And when one of those lives, when one of those children in my community dies, that's one too many. And you know what we do? We say their names. We host a vigil. As many of you probably know, in February, a student named Nex Benedict was beaten in a bathroom in Oklahoma because they were forced to use that bathroom. And then they died as a result of bullying and discrimination. And thousands of vigils were held across this country for this one boy. When one child dies, it's too many. When 13,000, I'm sorry, 14,000 now and counting children in Palestine die, it is 13,000 too many children. Ceasefire now, thank you. Thank you, next. Good evening. Hi, I'm Salka Valerio, and I am the resident, a resident of the city of Binghamton on the east side. So I got a couple things to mention. Um, the first one was, since you're on the traffic thing, you did say that the meeting was in May, but I would like to know the date for that. And um, I would also like to request that we get some speed bumps in Carlisle because um, there's none and cars like to whip around there pretty fast. And there's a bunch of kids that live there 
and um we we want to prevent some something from happening instead of doing something afterwards so there were it were a couple close calls um so I think it's going to be really important to get speed bumps in Carlisle also Saratoga as well um so I thought that was worth mentioning also every single one of the council members here um when they were running for office they talked about housing and how Binghamton has a huge housing um, crisis. I'm a huge advocate of crising, whether it's local, whether it's state, whether it's federal. And it's sad that we was here with the other council members always advocating for affordable housing. And to hear that they went over the budget for ARPA is disgraceful and sad because most of that money were just wasted away when we first got that money. I remember coming into these chambers and said, all of the money, if not half, should be going to affordable housing. And we're seeing the results of us not um, being able to spend that money on housing now. Um, so I hope that you guys are able to find the money to um, fund these projects for the land trust and for the Rice Foundation to build up these affordable housing units because it's needed. Um, even just posting a flyer of information about the housing, I had like 30 people inquire on Facebook about when they were getting built up and they're not even, they're not even here yet. So we have to make sure that we find that funding to make sure that those units um, go up. Also, I also want to talk about the, the bus station situation. Reasons why I used to be homeless pretty much my whole teen years from the age of 14 to the age about 23 until I got into Job Corps. And the safety hub when you were homeless and you didn't have anywhere to go was a bus station, was the libraries, was a laundry bat, because those were the only places that you could stay warm, you can charge your phone, and you could use the bathroom or rinse yourself off if you have dirt on you. Um, so the situation with people hanging out there as well is due to the fact that we don't have enough affordable units, due to the fact that the hotels are over um, capa capacity because of the homelessness, and due to the fact that we don't have a um, uh, warming, we do have a warming station, but a drop-in center where people can go drop in, wash their clothes, get something to eat, stay warm. And I think we have to figure out how we can do that instead of just puni puni being punitive towards homeless folks when they have no other choice but to be outside. So we have to figure that out. Um, I also want to say there's a quote that I read um, that I thought about. Many of us like to ask ourselves what we would do if it was a time when slavery actually exists, right? If we was in this time. And then the person said that we're doing it now. And the reason why I'm saying that is because right now there's a genocide happening in Gaza. You and have one our, minute left. Okay, and our liberation is really tied, especially the Black liberation, is tied to the people in Palestine. Um. The suffering that's happening to the human beings in Gaza is something I can't even imagine or begin to understand. People are starving, losing generation of of family, homes, hospitals are being destroyed. And I would like to see Binghamton on the right side of history for a change. It's been plenty of times that we advocates have come, suggested things, and people would say no, and then turn around and said, hey, maybe we should have signed on to that 20 years later. Just now, they're starting to build the Harriet Tubman, um, you know, trail, right? And Binghamton was head of the Ku Klux Klan. The first baseball player came here, and they treated him badly. A hundred years later, we're like, oh, sorry, let's put up some statues. We don't want to do that when it comes to the genocide in Palestine. We want to be on the right side of history today. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Well, welcome. Hello. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Brandel. First, I'd like to echo the housing crisis um, issue. Obviously, housing 
equality for all here in Binghamton and in Palestine. Um, I did was not planning to speak. I was just inspired by the people before me. So it's not going to be as good as before, especially the speech before. Um, hard to follow that up. Anyways, um, so my activism, I would like to say I'm pretty active organizer here in Binghamton, really is drawn. I would like this through my Jewish heritage. Um, I was from a pretty active Jewish community back home, you know, Long Island, blah, Jews. Um, but specifically, I am descendants of Holocaust survivors. My grandparents were the only ones to survive from their entire family. I did, was not, did not learn about genocide in school. I grew up with the knowledge of genocide. I grew up with the phrase never again. And I really think now, even yesterday, even 20 years ago, we should be have been saying never again. We should have been saying never again with Rwanda. We should have been saying never again with Sudan. We should be saying never again, especially now with Palestine. And that's what I'm here trying to say now, never again. I really want to be making my ancestors and descendants proud of me because they are not be here to say never again. They were killed. I want to be the reason why they, the, the people who can be saying never again because some, so many people, 12 million people were killed in the Holocaust. Some, my grandparents were lucky enough to barely make it under the skin of their teeth. My grandfather literally snuck his way out because they got illegal passports from saying that they were Puerto Rican. They were obviously not Puerto Rican, but um, they were born in Germany. But they got legal passports and were sent to like a prisoner of war camp. They literally had to lie their way out of being sent to Auschwitz. The rest of my family were not so lucky. I want to be the reason why they were alive and were able to I, were able to be never again. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Please vote for the ceasefire revolution. I want to be part of the change, and that's why I want to come and speak. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Good evening, council members. My name is Omar Acosta Nunez, and I am a student at Binghamton University. I am a resident of the West Side as well. And first and foremost, I want to say that affordable housing is a human right, number one. And as elected officials, it is your prerogative to defend that human right. It is your quite literally your duty as duly elected officials to defend that right. So I urge you to defend affordable housing, one. Two, I come before you in support of the ceasefire resolution. We've heard the statistics, we have the knowledge, we have the information, 30,000 Palestinians and counting are dead. 80% of the Gazan population is displaced and the Israeli government continues without mercy. The resolution is largely symbolic. It won't change anything tomorrow, it won't change anything in a week, it won't change anything in two weeks. But what it does show to the United States and to the rest of the world is that the city of Binghamton is ready to stand on the right side of history. That the city of Binghamton has decided to stand up for justice. In passing this resolution, we are saying exactly that. And quite frankly, there is nothing more powerful than collective action. Over the past couple of months, in fact, my entire junior year, admittedly as a supporter, not entirely vocal, I have seen the power of collective action. I have seen the power that comes when the people come together and decide to stand for justice here and over there. And now you have the chance to join the people. And as duly elected officials, it is your job to stand with the people that elected you. And with that, I urge you to support the ceasefire resolution. I urge you to stand on the right side of history. We have the information. We have the knowledge. It's time to act on it in whatever capacity we can. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Hello. I'm Sulamina Burns. I'm the founder of Support Black Business 607, and I am a resident of Binghamton. First, I want to say Eid Mubarak. On this last evening of Ramadan, it is important to remember that to whom much is given, much is required. For those of us in positions of power, it is our duty to speak. For those who are powerless, 
for those who are oppressed, for those who are ignored. The question is often asked, who do we condemn? The question should be asked, do we condemn ourselves for our silence, for our apathy, for our inaction? Do we condemn ourselves for our ability to select who is afforded freedom, who is afforded basic human rights, whose humanity is recognized, who deserves to live, and who deserves to die? Do we condemn ourselves for making those decisions based on our comforts and privileges at the expense of countless millions? Or do we decide no more? My mother, Loretta Burns, always told me, you live forever by how you are remembered. In the annuals of history, how will we be remembered? 100 cities nationwide have called for a permanent ceasefire. And I'm asking each of you, Michael Dundee, Michael Costi, Nate Hotchkiss, Hadassah Matvevsky, Robert Kavanaugh, Kenya Middleton, and Olamni Porter sitting here tonight to vote yes on a ceasefire resolution. That is the least required. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Misty M. Kirby. I am a proud South Side, Southeast Side homeowner. I also uh, work and volunteer in our great city. And I am a member of District 6. So for the past several months, I've been speaking at our school board meetings about dignity. I'm going to do the same Tuesday night next week. Be great to have some turnout there. In March, I was before this very body and also spoke about dignity, the idea that we all deserve to live and be treated with dignity, which includes acknowledgement and action on some of these basic human rights, housing, health care, education. When I was here in March, I also um, spoke about the ongoing effects of redlining here in the Triple Cities. Um, and I urged you to check out the University of Richmond's website, Mapping Inequality. And so, of course, this redlining initially came as the result of the National Housing Act in 1934, signed by New York's very own Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It's undignified, actually, that the mayor has made a farce of this body and have distracted you all from the work that you said you would do when we voted for you. Well, when everyone else voted, because... Mr. Costi, I did not vote for. However, the person I did vote for graciously and with dignity, might I add, stepped back to no longer allow our Puyallup mayor to attempt distraction from the real issues that we are facing in our city. We need to invest in our community. That does not mean making homelessness illegal. That has happened in far too many cities or is definitely in legislation in far too many cities, but to what end? Are we going to round up the homeless and then imprison them? And, and then what are we going to do? Force them into slavery? Because that is still legal if you're imprisoned. And, and so is that where we're going in this country? Is that what we are trying to do? Is that what county and state and local people are gearing towards? What about actually investing our money here? Countless studies have proven that poverty can, if we work at eliminating poverty, housing first, we can solve these problems and perhaps maybe lining the former city council's friends pockets a little less. So a few things we need to, as we have heard here over and over, not tonight, but in previous council members about the tax rate with the Homestead Act, about these special property tax rates for residents and non-residential properties, where we know that College students or other people are living, these houses are let out by room, and yet they pay the same tax rate that I do on my house that my family lives in. Now, because affordable housing is so hard to come by, I live in a grand 1,200 square foot, two bedroom house. And I realize I'm very lucky. I'm a first time homeowner. I never thought I'd be able to afford to buy a house. So tonight I am here very disappointedly to, um, ask you to support a resolution that you heard on the 25th of March at the business meeting, which is to support RL24-55, which is our Southern Door Land Trust, 
and RL24-63, which is looking at DAR developers. We are looking at Black women who want to invest in our community. I am not understanding why this is taking so long. Finally, because I am tired of paying tax money for Israeli Medicare for all, for their free university, when is it going to become time for us to take a stand on what is right? Please, I implore you to pass Resolution 24-25 to uh, that um, council member Hotchkiss brought up as a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. I feel at this point in October, uh, since October, if, you, if you're not on this side of history, then I think we're probably in a lot more trouble than we thought when we tried to help flip the council. You have so one please left. vote for a ceasefire and let's keep investing in our community and the people who live here. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Isabel. I'm a resident of Binghamton and I'm also a student here. I just want to say I echo all the sentiments about um, affordable housing said before, especially from the young man from the middle school. I think we often neglect the fact that our young people know this, they know what's going on and they are suffering. So we need to listen to them and actually take action on this. Um, I'm also here today to speak again in strong support of the ceasefire resolution as a community member and as a Jewish student here who, like many other Jewish advocates, lost my entire family to the Holocaust. For the last six months, we have watched the brutal genocide of the Palestinian people and the destruction of Gaza. And I'm here specifically to say not in the name of the Jewish people and to echo the sentiments of never again. Over the last six months, Israel has killed over over 40,000 people in Gaza, over 14,000 of whom are children, 14,000 children. According to Al Jazeera, there's, that is the equivalent of one out of 70 people in Gaza, or over 200 people killed every single day since October 7th. These numbers do not even encapsulate the, the suffering and brutality occurring to those who are starving, emaciated, injured, missing, or buried under the rubble. Attempts at aid for these folks specifically have been blocked and derailed by the Israeli army. International aid workers from the World Central Kitchen, as spoken about earlier, were killed, adding to a total of 224, likely more at this point, humanitarian aid workers killed since the start of this genocide. Human rights organizations globally have declared that without a ceasefire, this genocide will only continue and more Gazans will suffer. Oh, and sorry, that without a ceasefire, the only way to ensure that Gaza can be saved from starvation is a permanent ceasefire. The whole world has been screaming for months now, ceasefire, and it is time for Binghamton to set up and set an example to step up and set an example. And this is why we're here today. While we may seem like far, that we're far away, just a small community in New York, it is imperative to understand the power that this resolution can have in establishing a permanent ceasefire. The idea that the City Council of Binghamton should stay out of international crises blatantly disregards the complicity of institutions that exist within Binghamton, like the huge university, Binghamton University, that takes money from Lockheed Martin, Bay Systems, CAE, General Dynamics, and more, who are actively funding the, and fueling this genocide. The City Council's support for a ceasefire is critical. It becomes a clear warning to these institutions that they will not be granted a free pass to, to benefit financially from genocide and that the city of Binghamton will speak out. For months, Palestinian organizers and community members here have been demanding that President Biden enact a permanent ceasefire and little has changed. It's time that Bin Binghamton City Council shows that the Binghamton community, the state of New York, that we are demanding a permanent ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Good evening, council members. I'm Rebecca Rathmel, a City of Binghamton resident member of the 6th District. Um, I came here tonight completely expecting to speak solely in support of the ceasefire resolution. I did not anticipate also hearing such support for addressing the affordable housing deficit locally within our city. And uh, after more than a decade of advocacy around the same, it has me a bit emotional, but with public policy in mind to that end with affordable housing today, I do also want to just 
announce before I talk about the ceasefire resolution that members of the Fair Housing Advisory Board in just a few weeks will be submitting a resolution to Binghamton City Council that amends Chapter 45 of the City Charter to include unhoused status as a protected class under human rights law. With an alarming increase across the country of city ordinances leveling civil and criminal penalties against homeless individuals, this amendment would ensure that sheltered and unsheltered individuals, of which there are more than 3,000 across Broome County, would have the same right to pursue employment and educational opportunities, to enjoy access to and free movement within public spaces, and to receive emergency medical care and responsible discharge as any other city resident. It would also ensure that those left with no other option but to sleep on our streets are protected from the unreasonable search or seizure of their person or personal belongings, a practice currently covertly conducted by city pers personnel, most often late at night and without notice. The comments I'm about to share regarding the ceasefire resolution are on record from the February 28th public comment period, however, not all of you were here, and the numbers have significantly increased. I grew up in the DC area. Every year since I was in middle school, my class would take a field trip to the Holocaust Museum. Processing the atrocities committed against Jewish people and those who dared to resist the Nazi regime during World War II is and has always been impossible for me. I will never understand such hate. I will also never understand the inaction of those who knew of the inhumane treatment occurring yet did nothing to stop it. I believe strongly that being pro-Palestine and against anti-Semitism go hand in hand. All systems of oppression reinforce one another and none can be fought in isolation. The word genocide did not actually exist prior to 1944. It was coined by a Polish Jewish lawyer specifically to describe Nazi policies of systemic murder between 1939 and 1945. 80 years later, there is no doubt in my mind that genocide is the most fitting word to apply to the Israeli regime's current occupation and obliteration of Gaza and its mass killing of Palestinian civilians. Between October 7th and today, you've heard the numbers, over 30,000 Palestinians, 14,000 children, including 1,400 Israelis, and wounded over 100,000. Watching the carnage as it has unfolded since October has been helplessly excruciating. Standing and marching in solidarity has felt futile amidst the reality of American complicity. The Biden administration's unwavering commitment to sending billions of taxpayer dollars to support Netanyahu's military assault enrages me in a way I have yet to find sufficient words for. With the words I do have, however, I urge each of you, most of whom I know well and respect immensely, to use this platform to advocate for any measure that will result in the least amount of death and violence in support of this ceasefire resolution. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Hello. My name is Travis Bryden. Um, I'm a student at Binghamton University and I'm also a care manager for an agency in Binghamton. Um, Thank you all for having us here today. And I guess I'll start off first and foremost talking about the, I didn't expect to, so I'm very unprepared, but the affordable housing situation, um, as a care manager and as somebody that is studying social work, a lot of the clients that I work with, I would say about half are homeless or on the verge of homelessness. And um, I really implore you to do everything you can to help them out because um, me and my colleagues were running out of answers I don't know what to tell some of them sometimes when they're on the verge of losing their housing or they already are on the streets and they have been for months. <clears throat> and it's just a very 
perilous situation to to be in <clears throat> as someone that wants to to serve to serve these individuals and to help them navigate the system and end up in a better place. So, and I know I have dedicated some of my time canvassing for a couple of you this past election. I'm very pleased to see you getting in. And I hope that you do uh, tremendous work in this regard because this is something that is very dear to me. Um, but sorry, I didn't expect to have to address that here tonight. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I forgot my speech. Um, so I'll see how this goes. But I just want to mirror the sentiment about the ceasefire resolution in Gaza, just because that's another issue that is very near and dear to me with my Palestinian friends. Um, over the years, obviously, I have a kind of a background in social work and, and poli-sci, so I've always had a proclivity to pay attention to these matters. But these past six months have been particularly dire. Um, what we are witnessing now is uh, <clears throat> unparalleled humanitarian catastrophe in the modern era. And I believe that it is our moral duty to stand out and speak up against what is taking place in Gaza. And it may not seem like a local issue, but it very much is. Our tax dollars are funding it. Um, our weapons manufacturers are arming it. <clears throat> And even here in the state of New York, it has a very special relationship with the state of Israel. So every community that weighs in, every city council that passes a resolution does make a difference. It adds necessary pressure for the situation to come to an end. A hundred other communities have already weighed in. I hope to add Binghamton to that list. I hope that we can use whatever means, however big, however small, it does make a difference. It adds necessary pressure for this crisis to end this genocide against the Palestinian people. And I just implore you to please pass the ceasefire resolution. And I also implore you, again, getting back to affordable housing, keep working on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Uh, good evening. My name is Pax Zisler. I am a student at Binghamton University and a resident of Binghamton. I didn't plan on speaking today, so I'll keep this brief. Um, as a tap, hmm? oh, sorry. Can you all hear me well now? Yeah. Yes. Would you like me to restate what I said? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, my name is Pax Zisler. I'm a student at Binghamton University and a resident of Binghamton. And I'm going to keep this brief because I didn't plan on speaking, but I was inspired by the other speakers. Um, as a taxpayer, for I've spent years watching my taxes being spent on funding wars across the ocean against people I've never met for punishing the homeless, for daring to be homeless where somebody else can see them. On And now in Israel, for in helping Israel wage their war against, wage their, commit their genocide against the people of Palestine for having the audacity to simply live where they wish to settle. And as someone whose taxes go to funding this, my hands are soaked in blood. It is the least I can do to stand up and raise my voice against this and implore that you'll do the same. A free Palestine. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, I'm Roshino Flaherty. I'm a student at Binghamton University, and I'm an intern for the Broome County Arts Council. I study drawing and writing, and I'm also very Irish. My dad is from Dublin, um, and I feel like there's a lot of compassion and joy around Irish identity here, and there's a lot of compassion for the Irish struggle, but I don't see that same energy for the Palestinian struggle, and that's really disappointing to me. Uh, I look very Irish. I have a very Irish name. People are always bringing it up to me. And I know some of you here, in whatever capacity you're here, also have Irish American identity. Um, Irish American identity has a lot of place in the States. It has, it has impacted a lot of different parts of the American culture. And one way that I know it's imp impacted as an art student is in literature. There are a lot of famous Irish authors and writers uh, James Joyce, Oscar Wilde, even like a more modern one like Roddy Doyle. 
but I don't see the same love for Palestinian author authors either. And they're also victims of colonialism. They're also victims of imperialism. So I would like to read a poem today by Rishvat al who was killed on December, 20, uh, December 6, 2023 by an Israeli airstrike. Uh, he was a professor and he was a writer and he was published and he wrote this poem. It's titled, If I Must Die. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail so that a child somewhere in Gaza while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite you made, flying up above and thinks for a moment an angel is there, bringing back love. If I must die, let it bring hope, let it bring a story. Please vote for the ceasefire resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Good evening, city council members. I'm a student here at Binghamton and a resident of Binghamton. My niece is two today, and while she's happily celebrating- What's your name? Sorry, your name? Mandy Leong. My niece is two today, and while she's happily celebrating her birthday, all I can think about are the children who are powerless and have lost their families before they even know what love means. The average age murdered in Gaza was four. I was not prepared to be up here at all today, as you can tell from my shaky voice, but I'm here because I don't want her growing up knowing that I helped fund a genocide against children. I'm here because I feel helpless and all I feel like I could do is go to these protests and try to urge you guys to do something about this. And you guys have the ability to, this is your job and I really want you guys to listen to all the voices that have spoken here today before you hear the opposing side over there. I implore you to pass a ceasefire resolution and use your platform for good. Invest in libraries and less, invest in the environment, invest in our future. And maybe some public bathrooms, that would be nice. And just like in general, thank you so much for what you guys do. And I hope you guys use your platform for good. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone further for public comment? Prioritizing Binghamton residents. Welcome. You, can y'all hear me? My name is Dahlia Bekong. I am a student at Binghamton University. I'm here to urge support for the ceasefire. You live and work, live or work in the city of Binghamton? Um, yeah. Both, I guess, at this point. I'm sure there have been a numerous amount of people who have spoken to y'all. I came here like, what, now late? There is clearly a precedent of support for this resolution. And I don't know if there is any reason why anyone who has a basic, basic sense of humanity, a basic sense of compassion, who knows what the value of a human life is, would do anything but to vote for this. And personally, I'm not you know, in your minds. Y'all have your own motivations, your own incentives. But if there is any way for an understanding of someone who lives targeted by a state who is hell-bent on their own destruction, then I would urge you to put away whatever monetary incentives, whatever backhanded sentiments that y'all have and pass this resolution. Because without that, then why are we even here? Thank you. Next. Next. Welcome. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Derek Goodison. I'm a resident and I work in the city of Binghamton. Uh, I came up here today uh, expecting this much the same as uh, Rebecca mentioned earlier to only speak about the ceasefire in Palestine, which I'm passionate about. 
but it does a lot of good to hear other members of the city talking about the housing crisis because these matters are deeply linked together as people who I think Americans across the board, we can all struggle with the identity of clashing against power structures. It's in our blood. It's it's in our in our history. And realizing that what once was a system made to possibly support us can be turned against us at times when it isn't intended to serve any of the people who it's who it was built for um or maybe it was never built for them to begin with and it's time to start assessing those things but um <clears throat> as someone who never was able to specifically look at any group of people whether that's ethnically or religiously and identify with them uh strongly based on any one uh statement or uh grouping uh, I think it's important to recognize when people are hurting and when they're suffering and the people in Palestine have been hurting and suffering and we've been helping to cause them pain and suffering. And the least we can do is uh, support a ceasefire. Free Palestine. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Hi. Does, can you hear me okay? My name is Rami. I'm a resident of Binghamton. Um, I'm going to keep this short, but I speak to you today as a campus organizer and as an Arab Muslim student at Binghamton. Um, I've spent my entire life hearing the stories of my family be refugees and have to cross the Mediterranean. And since October 7th, I have lost family members. I'm not Palestinian, but I have family just, that just simply lives on the border close to, Pal close to Israel. And because of this, I have spent this entire time listening to the news and just feeling powerless. I'm going to keep this short, but I urge you to pass the ceasefire resolution. I urge you to stand with my Muslim brother, brothers and sisters who have felt powerless since October 7th and cannot do anything about it. I, I urge you today as a campus organizer that this means a lot to me and a lot to my, fa my family abroad. This needs to be passed. Thank you. Thank you. Any further speakers live and work in the city of Binghamton? Okay. So um, if anyone else who lives in the community would like to come and speak. Welcome. You'd like it. Okay. Well, come, come down. Like to speak first as a... go ahead. Great. Go ahead. Speak. Hello, uh, my name is Oren Levy. I live in Broome County. Right now, around the world, there are multiple active wars where the death toll far surpasses the Israel Hamas war. Why are people only protesting against Israel's right for self defense? Hamas is a terrorist organization. Can we uh, do something yeah, about that? Can we please not interrupt? Hamas is a terrorist organization. Can we agree on that? If we can't agree on that, then the conversation is over. You are a terrorist supporter. Never since the Holocaust have so many Jews been murdered. Over 1,200 innocent souls have been murdered. Babies have been butchered and burnt in their cribs. Entire families have been set on fire. What Hamas tried to do is the definition of genocide. Currently, there are over 130 hostages. And let me just suggest something. The terrorist group holding the baby hostage is the evil one. We're now six months into the war between Israel and Hamas. Hamas is a vicious, merciless, evil enemy that many, if not all Israelis, consider at the level of Nazis. They would be right, as the Charter of Hamas calls for the killing of all Jews. What people seem to not understand is that Hamas is a real army, an army of terrorists with no rules. Hamas prepared for this war for 20 years. This is why Gaza runs out of everything but rockets. 
To the people who call for a ceasefire, who do you want Israel to do a ceasefire with? A terrorist organization that has broken many previous ceasefires, including the hostage terrorist swap? Suppose there, suppose there was yet another ceasefire. Hamas vowed to repeat October 7th again and again. They have attacked Israel on a consistent basis before. Only this time they were success, successful in their mission to kill as many Jews as possible. To the people who say that Gazans are not Hamas and they don't need to be armed, I would say, sure, that would be fair in an ideal world. However, you do agree that Hamas is a terrorist organization. You do agree that they will attack Israel again. And you do agree that they will always hold Gazans at their will. Hamas must be dismantled completely and completely destroyed. Unfortunately, there's no humane way to get that accomplished. There will never be peace between Israel and the Palestinians with Hamas surviving this war. The only stance a decent human can have is Hamas must surrender unconditionally and release all the hostages. I bet nobody in this room is aware that the leader of Hamas, Yicha Sinwar, was jailed in an Israeli prison for life for multiple murders of Palestinians. Yes, Palestinians. While in prison, Sinwar was diagnosed with brain cancer. He was treated by the Israelis, survived, and made full recovery thanks to the people who should have sentenced him to death. He later released as part of a hostage swap. Now let's talk about some statistic, statistics. China keeps 2 million Muslim in concentration camps. 5.5 million people killed in the Congo Civil War. 500,000 people killed in Syria ISIS War. 400,000 people killed in Yemen Civil War. Just in 2023, 13,000 people died in Sudan. 7,000 people died in Mexico. 100,000 people died in Ukraine. And another 100,000 people died in Ukraine in 2022. I think you get the point. I find it peculiar that the city of Binghamton would even entertain a call for a ceasefire, a ceasefire in this conflict. You have one minute left. But not for any other conflict any, everywhere. Hamas claims that 30,000 people were killed in the war. If we believe this number coming from terrorist organization, but the majority of those killed are Hamas terrorists. Yes, there are unfortunately civilians killed as in any war. But unlike any other war, Hamas uses civilian infrastructure such as hospitals, mosques, cemeteries for its military operation. It's the same anti-Semitic tactics. If there's no Jews to blame, there's no news. You care about Gaza only because you're anti-Semitism or ignorance. All this talk about Israel being some sort of a bloodthirsty entity is part of the underlying anti-Semitism that cannot see Jews genuinely defending themselves. In case you didn't know, there are 49 Muslim-majority co uh, countries in the world. There's a singular Jewish state, which is about the size of New Jersey, and people really hate that. Your time is up. The level of anti-Israel propaganda. We're out of time. Thank you so much. I will, um, I will send you this. We're out of time. Ne next. Okay, please. Please, no shouting. We're, time is up. We're, we're moving on. Okay. My name is, you can hear me? Point of order. Hey, 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 point of order. Point of order. Even if you don't agree with somebody, we still are protected by the First Amendment, even if you don't agree with what they say. Can, can we get some order? We're, we have a couple more speakers here. Thank you. My name is Rhonda Levine. I have been a resident of Binghamton and taxpayer since 1982. Um, children have been through the Binghamton school system. So I am not, I know if you're, unless you're fourth generation, you're not really from here, but I've been here a long time. Um, I urge you to support the ceasefire resolution. As a Jewish woman, where the previous speaker may call me an anti-Semite or a self-hating Jew. Um, I'm very active in the local Jewish community. 
Um, and there is nothing anti-Semitic about the ceasefire resolution. Let me assure you of that. Um, I won't repeat what all the former speakers have said of why this is like a no-brainer, but we have a real responsibility. The reason why in this particular case is so important for a ceasefire, it's our money, our tax, our tax money that's basically buying the weapons that are destroying Gaza as well as the Palestinian people. If people are really, um, if it's, if it's important to think of the safety of Israelis, there will be no safety for Israelis until there is freedom for Palestinians. So I urge you all to pass this resolution, which is a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Hi. Um, my name is Ravo. I Ravo Rue. I work in the city of Binghamton. I just want to respond to likely this lady here and the gentleman please over address there. City Council. And look, I'll, please, please I'll address do a general city council. response then. Over 30,000 people dead. To me, that's easy. That's mass genocide. Let's be real here. A ceasefire is humane. Over 30,000 Palestinians is not. End of story. This is not a debate. 30, over 30,000 people are dead. How can you be okay with that? Enough's enough. We need to have a ceasefire right now. Thank you. Next. Welcome. Hi, my name is Yulia Ruveni. I'm a resident of Brom County, and I'll continue what Oran started. In case you didn't know, there are 49 Muslim majority countries in the world. There is a singular Jewish state, which is about the size of New Jersey, and people cannot accept it. The level of the anti-Israel propaganda, which you are all part of, and blood libel please, surpasses please the, the levels of Nazi Germany regime which led to 6 million Jews murdered and at least 50 million people killed in the World War II. The only reason this propaganda works is the underlying anti-Semitism that again vilifies Jews. In conclusion, I propose a different approach. Instead of passing a resolution asking for a ceasefire, let us set an example and call for an immediate release of the hostages and Hamas unconditional surrender. If this happens, the war would be over. There was a ceasefire on October 6. Israel withdrew its forces in 2005 from Gaza. Hamas took over, and since then, there was no stop to the terrorist attack. You are basically supporting Hamas in what you're doing. People of Palestine were dancing and passing candy on the streets when 9-11 happens. Just choose whose side you are on. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further public comment? And come on down. Welcome. So uh, my name is Ed Nizolowski. I'm a resident of Tioga County, but I, I participate in a lot of the activities of Broom Peace Action and Veterans for Peace. And I just want to say uh, I'm quite impressed with all the people that have spoken, especially young people. Um, I know it's a long evening, but this is what democracy looks like. So on uh, January 26th, I had a guest viewpoint in the Press and Sun Bulletin. It was entitled, Seeds of Hate in Israel-Hamas Conflict Continue to Impact Palestinians, which wasn't really quite the right title. Now, guest viewpoints have to be 500 words. And this was taken from some, a longer article I wrote that was about 2000. And um, that appeared in the Oigo Penny Saver at full length. And I also submitted it to... Um, um, a group called the, the Vietnam Veterans Against the War. They still exist. They have a publication called The Veteran, and they've accepted it because even after all this length of time, uh, they're trying to do what they can to fight the militarism that is so pervasive in our, uh, in our politics, in our culture, in our economy. So most of this article, I was focusing on uh, people in that part of the world 
that uh, are still communicating with one another and trying to look for peaceful means of resolving the issue of uh, the various groups that are there. If you look on Wikipedia, they have an entry for uh, Arab-Israeli cooperation. There's just 20 different groups of one sort or another. I just want to mention a few of them. Uh, one's called Seeds of Peace, and this is for a Palestinian and Jewish uh, teenagers. It's a, it's a peace camp in, in the state of Maine. Uh, David Barenboim has an orchestra made up of Palestinians and Jewish uh, musicians. And then there's, there's an Israeli-Palestinian Chamber of Commerce. Now, there are millions of Jewish people both in the country and around the world that are not happy with what uh, you know, the Israeli government is doing. Uh, one other group that uh, I was really impressed with, it's called Rabbis for Human Rights. And they form human shields on the West Bank so that uh, the, the Jewish settlers there don't destroy their olive groves. So I think, I, you know, that's that's something to, uh, you know, really point out. Also, Rachel Corey Foundation. Rachel Corey was a young woman from uh, Olympia, Washington. <clears throat> she became quite uh, enamored and upset over the, the plight of Palestinians. She uh, she went to the, the West Bank. She barricaded herself in a Palestinian home that's going to be bulldozed. The, the the bulldozer destroyed the home and she lost her life. Now, her parents have established a foundation and they continue to try to um, uh, promote the ideals of their daughter. You know, they're not trying to seek ret retribution, say we need to keep, you know, uh, talking with one, one another. We need to look for a different solution. And then uh, I just came across the, a fellow <clears throat> who's an imam and he identifies as Bedouin, Muslim, Israeli, and Palestinian. And because he does that, he gets criticism from all four different groups because, you know, you need to pigeonhole yourself. And uh, he says, no, let's keep talking to one another and uh, let's try to find some way of sharing this. So he has um, a group he calls the Negev Coexistence Forum for Civil Equality. So that's kind of a mouthful, but uh, this is something that he's done himself. And um, the other part of my article was documenting what um, some of the extremist elements of the Israeli Knesset say, and they, they have a great deal of support around the world and within Israel that say Palestinians don't have a right to exist. Uh, you know, you can... Uh, uh, you have one minute left. One minute left? Oh, yeah, let me uh, move on here. So you've heard the phrase, follow the money, uh, and also um, the other phrase that goes along with that is trying to get money out of politics is like trying to stop water from flowing downhill. The is, is, uh, Israeli lobbyist groups are among the most effective in the United States. Uh, they're not doing anything illegal. Every group out there has got uh, you know uh, lobbyists in Washington. So Israel gets... $3.3 billion in defense aid, along with other aid that's for uh, economic purposes and for cultural purposes. Uh, Isra Israel doesn't really need that, that, that kind of money, that kind of subsidy. There's a former uh, ambassador to Israel said, this is basically a subsidy for the military industrial complex. And another figure that I heard was that 2.9% uh, of the adult population in Israel are millionaires. So, um, once again, uh, if you want to know what the, 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 the state of our country is in, why don't we have Medicare for all? Why do we have homeless people? Why do we have homeless veterans? Why do we have 3,000 bridges that need help? Follow the money. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak at public comment? Okay. With that, uh, the clerk may read into the record the public comment submit, submitted via email. This one is from Aviva Friedman. Dear city council members, my name is Aviva Friedman and I am a resident of the sixth district, currently represented by council member Costi. I am unable to attend the meeting tonight, so I must submit my comments in advance to please be read into the record. I implore you all to vote in favor of the resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. As I and others have mentioned before, I know you did not run for office in order to weigh in on the global geopolitical stage. However, what you did sign up for was to represent your constituents and amplify their voices in a way only an elected official can. 
The supporting document submitted with this legislation is robust and sufficiently outlines why a ceasefire resolution is imperative. The city of Binghamton has a unique position related to the human humanitarian crisis in Gaza, as we have multiple weapons manufacturers close by. But even as Americans, our tax dollars fund our military and the foreign military aid going to the IDF. According to an April 2nd article from the Washington Post, Israel has received more U.S. military aid and more U.S. aid of any type than any other country since World War II. In that sense, your constituents and the city of Binghamton are inextricably involved in this issue. I'm not a military or foreign policy specialist, but I am a Jew whose family has lived in Israel for hundreds of years, predating the establishment of the state of Israel by well over a century. I am an Israeli citizen. I am also a human being who recognizes the humanity in the 1,000 plus Israelis and 30,000 plus Palestinians who have been slaughtered in this unimaginable crisis. We truly cannot change the past. We cannot undo what is already done. But moving forward, it is the least we can do to demand that President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu cease the unimaginable destruction and loss of life to which we are contributing. I implore you all to please vote in favor of this incredibly important and timely resolution. From Lawrence Hammond, Senior Vice President and Director of CPC Access, the Community Preservation Corporation. Dear Binghamton City Council, I am writing to highly recommend Dominique Rice as a BIPOC developer whose dedication and skills in identifying and cultivating affordable housing solutions are truly commendable. I had the privilege of getting to know Dominique during her time in the Community Preservation Corporation Access Program, and I am confident in her ability to make a significant impact in the field of affordable housing. During her tenure in the Access Program, Dominique consistently demonstrated her exceptional capabilities. Not only did she excel in the program's requirements, but she also emerged as a natural leader among her peers. Her passion for creating affordable housing solutions was evident in her innovative ideas and unwavering commitment to addressing this critical issue in our community. Dominique possesses all the necessary tools and qualities required to successfully execute with the City of Binghamton. Her profound understanding of the intricacies of affordable housing, coupled with her strong work ethic and leadership skills, make her a standout candidate for any initiative related to this field. She approaches challenges with a combination of creativity and practicality, ensuring that her solutions are not only effective, but also sustainable in the long run. Dominique's dedication to making affordable housing accessible to marginalized communities is not only inspiring, but also invaluable in addressing the housing crisis that many cities, including Binghamton, are facing. Her commitment to equity and her ability to work collaboratively with the diverse stakeholders make her an asset to any project or organization focused on community development. In conclusion, I wholeheartedly endorse Dominique Rice as a BIPOC developer with immense potential and a bright future in the field of affordable housing. I have no doubt that she will continue to make a positive impact on our community, and I am excited to see the difference she will undoubtedly make. Please feel free to reach out to me if you require any further information or have any questions regarding Dominique's qualifications and capabilities. I'm more than willing to provide additional insights or discuss her potential in greater detail. Thank you for considering Dominique Rice for any opportunities related to affordable housing development. I'm confident that she will excel in any endeavor she chooses to undertake. And then from Pastor Frank Barnett. I am writing this letter to express my strong support for the initiatives undertaken by the DAR developers and Southern Door Community Land Trust towards maintaining high standards of accommodation. As an actively engaged community leader for years, I am delighted to witness the transformative approach the developer has been espousing. Seeing the developer's commitment to promoting high quality and affordable housing for the citizens is, is inspiring. The determination to strike a balance between affordability and quality has potentially made a significant difference in many lives. As such, I am extremely optimistic that the developer will continue to set forth initiatives that ensure better housing conditions and contribute significantly towards urban development. If the City Council Board could support these noble initiatives proposed at 6 Florence Street and 18 Cary Street, this would be appreciated. I firmly believe that this project will be instrumental in decreasing the homeless crisis in the Broome County area, as well as safeguarding the betterment of our society. Thank you. <clears throat> So with that, we complete the public comment section and we can move on to our first reading legislation. Uh, uh, Madam President, yeah. I was wondering if I can make a motion to uh, vote uh, for the resolution 2425 to be first on the agenda, please. I, I second. Okay. All right. Um, Okay. Uh, all, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Oh, uh, the clerk has indicated we should do a roll call vote. Okay. okay. Council Member Porter? Aye. Council Member Middleton? Aye. Council Member Cavanaugh? Aye. Council Member Dundon? Yes. Council Member Costi? Yes. Council Member Hotchkiss? Aye. Council President Matavetsky? Aye. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Point. Just order. Just one second. We just we just moved it on. The, we just moved it up. So just wanted to let everybody know that we just moved it up from the top to the bottom. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. So um, it's so exciting to talk about workers' compensation insurance. Come on. <laughs> okay. So um, we're, this is an introductory or um, resolution R24-25, considered in rules and procedures, special studies. So um, council member Hotchkiss, would you introduce? Uh, yeah, so introductory resolution 24-5. Uh, this is the ceasefire resolution that we've been discussing. Um, I, yeah, I, I think from the beginning, I have stated that I, I support this. I can make a motion uh, if you're uh, going to make a motion. A motion to adopt introductory resolution 24-25. Thank you. Motion by Councilman Hotchkiss, seconded by Councilman Dundon. Discussion. Yeah, so I, I supported this from uh, the first time it was being uh, introduced. Uh, just just for clarity, I, I didn't write this. I, I don't think anybody, any member of council wrote this, but it was submitted by Amari. And um, yeah, so I want to I just like give give credit where credit is due. Um, and this is the. This is our version of trying to have a co-governance structure where we allow the public to participate, not only in uh, speaking, but also submitting legislation. So I think that's, I just want to acknowledge that quickly. Um, uh, to, I hope my fellow members of council don't need any more um, convincing to, to vote yes on this, but I make a few, few comments. Um, we've, We've had numerous um, numerous comments, people coming down. There's been numerous demonstrations. We've had uh, ample supporting documentation. There's There's been petitions that supported this. Um, I don't think there's any doubt that our community is asking us to pass this resolution. Uh, I know that there is a lot of hesitation um, to, to jump into this uh, geopolitical realm and that's not really why we we ran for office, but I think we we ran for office to to hear our community and respond accordingly. So, and that that's what I intend to do, and I hope you all do the same. Uh, I think there's it's uh, I understand why people are are moving on the local level when there hasn't been a response on the federal. Or state level that we would like to see. I think it's, I'm. I, it stings a lot to have to say the the pledge of allegiance, knowing that we're we're actively funding and facilitating a genocide. It's. Um, I, I struggle with that a lot. Uh, so I. I know we've all demonstrated that we want to be be better than the last council, and there's been so many times that I've sat in the seats when there's been a contentious issue or something that's been very important to the community. Uh, there's been ample support from the community, and then it gets voted down, and that that process of being disheartened and being frustrated and being enraged by being disregarded by the city council was largely uh, motivated me to run to be here now so i have every intention of acting on behalf of the community and moving this forward as as far as we can go so i hope you all do the same um i really encourage you to to vote yes on this thank you thank you councilman hotchkiss any further discussion yes um... oh. Did you want to speak? Oh, I'll I'll just go really quick. Councilwoman Middleton. Um, I just wanted to say that I um have been I've been moved to tears by how many uh, beautiful people are here. Everyone here is so different, 
everyone looks different. And this is uh, one of the reasons why I ran. Um, but I, I, I just wanna say, I hope you all stay active in local politics because uh, local politics is the way that we control our daily lives. And um, I, just wanna, I just wanna say that, and I wanna thank every single person for coming today. So thank you. Um, so uh, I thank everyone that showed up and came out to speak um, for, the, for the resolution as well, even the opposition. Um, I've been, forgive me, I'm not much of a public speaker. Anybody knows me on the campaign and knows I wasn't much, but I usually try to speak the truth. And the truth is I, um, I'm not offended by being an, a, a terrorist or be called a terrorist. Because if one man terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. So I take that on, bring it to me. Because I'm not going to stand for genocide. I wish this energy was for Rwanda. I wish that the American, uh, the US had involved themselves in Rwanda as well as Sudan. But none of that happened. But I'm glad it happened now. So where was you when, when it was talking about Sudan? So I don't understand that. And the fact that you held a flag, American flag, and the Star of David, I find it quite insulting. I find it find it insulting to me, to my senses, that I look at it as. Hey, hey, hey! Here, hey, listen. I look listen, at it as. Everyone gets their time to speak, and I'm gonna. Yeah, I look ask at it as. I look at people. it as a Nazi they talk flag, over people. which I find very offensive coming from somebody who is Jewish. How dare you! How dare you? You've forgotten what you had done, what happened to you. You've forgotten who it had done to your hey. people. You have forgotten. Wait, can wait, I, can I call? Never can forget. I, I never forget either. Can so I call a point of order and we get back on? I'm making it point to order. Council. I'm reclaiming my time. I'm reclaiming my time. My time. My time. I'm speaking. I'm speaking. No, I'm reclaiming my time. And for therefore, no, when I look at this, when I look at this, Councilman, and I see how you stand by genocide, hey. the thing. No, listen, listen, you need to be. No, it, no. Where, the, the clerk. Officer, is, somebody get the clerk is getting is is heading out to. Hey, we can. We're. The police, the police are going to be coming in. We're we're going to have order in here. Like this is ridiculous. This is this is Councilman Porter's time to speak. Again, I reclaim my time, just like Maxine Waters. I reclaim my time. I just can't see how you can stand by the killing of people and the killing of children. I just can't see how you stand by that. How is not in your soul that it don't burn? I I just can't stand by that. I can't. So I know history just as much. I know that when Jacob Wheeler, the young man that came here, mentioned the way he was taught, I was taught the same thing, but I wasn't even involved in Hebrew school. I was involved in the fact of humanity. I was involved in my mother and my father speaking about the times when they had to walk during the apartheid of America. I knew that when they talked about that, they said everything affects everyone. Everyone is involved. Everyone is involved. Everyone is touched. Everyone is all connected. Maybe you need to read the book Origin by Isabel Wilkinson. Maybe you'll find out what that is. So the whole thing is, I, I'm in support of this. And as much as a symbol it, it might be, I wish it was. It, I wish it was the thing. No interrupting. Hey. Enough. Enough hey, interrupting. Nobody. Again, I can reclaim my time. Excuse Thank me. You. Excuse me. There'll be no interrupting. Thank you. That's Thank all right. Thank you, officers. Thank you. 
Excuse me. There'll be no interrupting. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. So. Uh, if the interruptions continue, we will have to be removed. So this is important. I find it important. And I'm with you. And, uh, and I thank y'all for coming out. I'm going to call a point of order that if there's any more outbursts, people will be removed. Do you hear me? Excuse me. I think she's going to have to be removed. She's not even listening to me. Let's be gone. Her. Do something. Not interrupt. Somebody, get somebody in here, please. Yeah. All right, get cooking. Again, to reiterate what I was trying to say, um, that if there's more outbursts while people, council members are speaking, that you will be removed. Thank you. All right. Uh, would any other council member like to speak to this resolution? Is that a council member Kavanaugh? Okay, council member Kavanaugh. <coughs> There are over 19,000 municipalities in the United States. Most of it, most of the time, we're concerned with very local issues. Uh, the speed bumps that Salka mentioned earlier are more our speed than trying to forge uh, peace in the Middle East. Uh, after our election, we were... Uh, I think uh, often reminded there are lanes uh, in politics. There are spheres of responsibility and authority. And that best practice is usually to sort of color in those lines. But there are times when that simply doesn't work. This nationally is becoming one of those times. Uh, the uh, people are bubbling up locally in grassroots fashion in hundreds of cities across the country, just as you folks all have, to make, uh, make a point, make points that uh, some of our national leaders are not listing enough, are not responding fast enough. And I think this particular conflict is unique in that uh, the United States is the is the uh, the 200 the 2000 pound elephant in the room uh, with with the ability to uh, affect outcomes. So I, I, I have to weigh the uh, the slippery slope arguments about about opening uh, city politics to international and and national politics. I have to weigh um, our sphere, our lane of what we normally do against what so very many of our my constituents, all of our constituents have been coming out and saying. Um, the personal conversations, the one-on-ones, the many, many, many dozens of constituents that signed uh, the petitions that have come in. Um, there's a lot of very squeaky wheels out there. Uh, this resolution is not much oil for those squeaky wheels, I'm afraid. Uh, as so many people have said, what we're doing is largely uh, symbolic. Um, what I perceive is a somewhat national, uh, you know, movement uprising, going to city councils, going to town boards with these sort of resolutions is, I think, a movement, although... All the Google algorithms could just be deciding that I'm it's something I'm interested in feeding them all to me, but I think we're getting some national traction. Um, this has not been an, an easy uh, vote to consider. Um, it, it really uh, uh, goes against some of the local sort of trying to focus on the local, trying to focus on what we can do, what we should be doing, um, what our uh, what what our what our areas of concern are. But the 
community has largely stood up, has largely spoken, has largely been uh, here, and you're here, and it's been not a, it's not been a a, a little uh, you know flash in the pan. This has been a months long effort building, and I think the resolution that uh, has been proposed that is before us comes from a place of basic humanity, basic hope. Uh, it is one that tries not to be political, but to be uh, simply for uh, peace and hope. And I also would like to mention that uh, there has been some movement, there has been some, uh, some signs of hope this week. Uh, for the last three days, over 400 uh, relief trucks have been getting through into Gaza. Uh, in the last day and a half, Israel has uh, pulled back significant portions of their troops. It's not a ceasefire yet. It's not a permanent ceasefire yet. Uh, but it's signs of hope. And I think what we could do here tonight is another gesture of hope. Uh, one of my final concerns is that, well, we're trying to come from a place of reconciliation, of hope, that our little gesture, the little thing that we could do, um, can, could be, can be weaponized. And so I'm speaking to try and make sure that, that uh, the place we're speaking of is a place of reconciliation, is a place of peace, is a place of hope. Um, other communities that have gone through this process, uh, many of the legislators have pointed out that um, these discussions can be a point of rift of, of breaking uh, the local community spirit. And I hope that's not what we have here. I hope we can stand and say, hey, this is Binghamton. Give him a little shout out. This is how we feel. And that's all. Thank you, Councilman Kavanaugh. Any other council members wish to speak? Councilman Hotchkiss. Yeah, I just forgot one of my original comments, but I think what what this uh, the resolution really boils down to can be uh, is summarized in some of our supporting literature, um, and really that in um, to call for a ceasefire is the acknowledging that a cycle of violence in the Israeli Palestinian conflict will not be solved by further violence. Instead, the root causes of the conflict need to be addressed. And I think that's that's. A, was written really beautifully and uh, it acknowledges the intention of what we're aiming for with this this resolution. And uh, I didn't want that to be excluded from my comments. So that's all, thank you. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the mic if no one else has any further comments. Um, Councilwoman Middleton. Um, I just want to say something. I just want to apologize um, for getting up, but you know, we have to remember that this is America and that even if you don't agree with something, there's still ways and in order. Uh, I mean, that's the way I was raised. Everything is in dignity and order. So even if you don't respect someone or you don't respect how uh, what's being said, we still have to be respectful to everybody. So, um... I want to re reiterate my concerns about um, taking up geopolitical issues. Um, this is not something when we campaign that we um, ask residents about, nor was it something I would say two people brought it up with me while I was campaigning. Amari's petition brought up five uh, people. Um, and I, I'm so I, I have my concerns about taking up things that we can't do much about. But that said, um, my council members um, signed out this request for legislation, and that means that um, I have to vote, right? Um, and after reading the specific language, which I think I just want to read out loud what we're actually talking about. Um, <clears throat> so the title is a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, the release of hostages, and increased humanitarian aid. Whereas 
All human life is precious, and the targeting of civilians, no matter their faith or ethnicity, is a violation of international humanitarian law. And whereas the Binghamton City Council expresses its unwavering support for all Arab, Israeli, Palestinian, Jewish, Muslim, and all other members of the community who are impacted, each of whom has the right to learn, work, worship, gather, advocate, mourn, and celebrate free from the intimidation and harassment. And whereas the Binghamton City Council condemns all forms of anti-Arab racism, anti-Palestinian racism, anti-Semitism, and Islamophobia, and whereas between October 7th and March 13th, armed Violence has claimed the lives of over 1,300 Israelis and over 31,000 Palestinians, including Americans, and wounded tens of thousands more. And whereas hundreds of thousands of lives are at imminent risk of bombing and starvation if a permanent ceasefire is not achieved and humanitarian aid is not delivered without delay. And whereas all members of the New York... <laughs> Congressional delegation must use the platform provided by their office to advocate for measures that will result in at least the least amount of death and violence and amplify the voices of their constituents. And whereas the United States must support a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that respects the human rights and dignities of both parties, of both peoples, and whereas the federal government holds immense diplomatic power to save Israeli and Palestinian lives. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the city of Binghamton, one, calls upon the Biden administration to immediately call for and facilitate de-escalation, the return of hostages, and a permanent ceasefire to prevent further death and humanitarian catastrophe. And two, calls upon the Biden administration to immediately reinstate funding to UNRWA and to send and facilitate unrestricted humanitarian aid at the levels recommended by the United Nations for the Palestinian people. Be it further resolved that upon passage, a copy of this resolution be set, sent to the office of the US President Joe Biden, the office of the US House Representative Mark Molinaro, the office of the US Sen Senator Chuck Schumer, the office of US Senator Kristen Gillibrand, the, the Office of New York State Senator Leah Webb, the Office of New York State Assemblywoman De Donna Lopardo, the Office of New York State Governor Kathy Hochul. So after reading the specific language that um, of the proposed resolution, I personally um, support it um, and will be voting yes. But my yes may not, I don't want it to be presumed that it's a broader support for some of the more extreme agendas um, or actions or ideas, which are not represented by everyone that is here. Um, but I want, I'm voting, I support the language of this resolution. Okay. Um, that said, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not a find, opposed to finding common ground. And that's, that's why I'm supporting this. And um, I, re I reiterate that the wording of this resolution was very thoughtfully done and um, much appreciated. Um, I hope that constituents that are listening um, understand that regardless of your voices on national or international topics, my votes and comments on this resolution, I hope that it doesn't give you pause to reach out to me when you need me. Um, I'm here to serve you. Um, and I encourage everyone to reach out to federal representatives <laughs> Um, uh, on their own as well. So, thank you. Okay. Um, and with that, the unless anyone wants to respond to my statement, uh, Councilman Dundon. Actually, I want to chime in now. So, from the beginning of this, I was kind of a uh, big pro uh, opponent against us sticking our nose in geo geopolitical issues. And uh, Mari over there, even though I'm you know a very busy guy, I didn't respond to everything sent me more than enough information to make me realize it's not so much a geopolitical, this is a humanitarian issue. And, and in being that, I don't care what politician gets mad I didn't stay in my lane. I don't care what politician gets, has, gets rubbed the wrong way that I spoke up on this. 
Because at the end of the day, if we are not our brother and sister's keepers, what is the point? So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other fur further comment or we can call the roll? Okay, the clerk may call the roll. Council Member Porter. Aye. Council Member Middleton. Aye. Council Member Kavanaugh. Aye. Council Member Dundon. 100% yes. Council Member Costi. Aye. Council Member Hotchkiss. Aye. Council President Medovetsky. Aye. Thank you. Um, we're going to continue on with our meeting. Okay. All right. Um, so we will be. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. So we are on uh, int uh, introductory ordinance. Oh. 24-25 considered in employees. Councilman. Wait, no, no, actually uh, 2401. Uh, the local oh, sorry. Law. I skipped the ATV. Jump, jumping around here. The first piece of uh, legislation is introductory local law LL24-01 considered in municipal and public affairs. Councilwoman Middleton. Um, This is uh, chapter 400. Vehicle, vehicles. Please be quiet as you're exiting. We're having a meeting. Thank you. Uh, vehicles and traffic, adding the, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, the prohibition of operation of off-road vehicles in the city of Binghamton, an ordinance amending chapter 400 of the city charter, vehicles and traffic, adding uh, prohibition of uh, operation of off-road vehicles in the city of Binghamton. So basically it's. Uh, so is making a motion there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I'd like to make a motion. I thought I said that. Sorry. A second. Okay. Motioned by Councilwoman Middleton, seconded by Councilman Porter. Yeah. Are we for a discussion or? If there's a, so we second it. So discussion. Sorry. <laughs> um. I find that this is important. Uh. We already have something on the states talking about the ATVs, but we're also, I just wanted to, for this amendment, uh, I wanted to uh, just make it sure that we get the people that are, are actually committing the crime for, for the ATVs. So. Any further discussion? Well. Councilman Kavanaugh? Um, so this this uh, this RL originally came uh, kind of at the behest of uh, recognizing an ongoing uh, public safety concern. Uh, this resolution came in uh, at the behest of uh, uh, the police department and the mayor. I specifically I was uh, Officer Brown. I believe that that originally kind of presented it and did the background research. And uh, our our ordinance is uh, or local law rather is uh, modeled on. The local law in place in Syracuse that is addressing uh, these concerns in Syracuse. Um, is this has gone through a few amendments? Uh, we we discussed them publicly at uh, at work session. Um, I, I don't know if individual members want to speak to their their uh, individual amendments, um, but I think we should highlight those and uh, just kind of point out that uh, we we've been putting in a lot of kind of research and consideration uh, into how we want to see this implemented, and I, I think. In the end of the day, it it sort of represents a model of of uh, what our legislative process can be like as a council. Um, as it, uh, it it's had some 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 good considerations, and I, I I might chime back in, but maybe other people want to speak to their amendments. I didn't do any of the amending, so. So when this Thank first you. councilman Dundon. So when this first came about, my first thought was the people that use electric bikes or motorized bikes on the road. That actually that's their only form of transportation. So working with corporate counsel, I had this amendment added. 
Nothing contained herein, however, shall be deemed to apply to or prohibit the use of bicycles as defined in Section 102 of the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law, the use of electric scooters and bicycles with electric assist as defined in Sections 114-E and 102-C of the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law, respectively, or any other vehicle legal for on for use on public streets and highways under the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law, provided the use is on permissible streets and highways in compliance with New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law. Because like I said, my biggest thing was, is this was going to hurt the citizens that use motorized bike or electric bikes to get groceries or to get to and from work. So I did work with corporate counsel. We did make that amendment, and that amendment has been added to the law. Thank you, Councilman Dundon. Councilman Hotchkiss? Yep. Um, so the part of the this law is to uh, was to increase fines and fees, um, just to make it uh, have it have more teeth. However, um, fees initially started out um, probably at like ten x of the current um, cost of of getting impounded. Um, I wanted to reduce that so it's only reflects like a, a five five x increase in the um, cost and that has been adjusted um, to from two thousand to one thousand. Um, so that that was in there. My other uh, ask to amend this was to have the and we're doing this in in real time. Um, was to make sure any fines, fees, uh, or uh, monies collected from impounding would be um, put into a youth funding budget rather than be for um, rather than be for uh, the police vehicles. So, so we want to do this one. We're just going to figure out which youth programming line we want to want to have that money transferred to, and that's so. If anybody else wants to talk about this, go ahead. All right. Um, so one of the things that um, I put quite a bit of time into looking at this bill, including reaching out to council members up in Syracuse um, and uh, trying to, you know, I, I flyered in my districts to get targeted feedback from District Five. Um, and I made multiple requests for, for data related to the current situation with ATVs and dirt bikes. Um, I was disappointed that the, the city was attempting to tackle a, pro, uh, a problem without understanding the current situation, um, from looking at the, the data. And, um, so, uh, we, I've added, um, uh, a, an amendment or to to the original, um, or I guess a, a change to the original to put in data. Um, so I can just read it. The chief of uh, police is, um, or is, uh, we're going to add, um, or his designee is charged with the enforcement of um, the previous provisions of this article. And for the first two consecutive years after the law is enacted, at the first work session in August of each year, the chief of police of the city of Binghamton shall report to city council on the number of arrests and impoundments under the section of this law for the preceding calendar year. Um, I would hope that they would also speak to um, call data, but um, it was, it was, I, I in, in addition to this law and, and laws going forward, I wanna make sure that we have uh, data tracking and that we understand that impacts and report backs on what, what it is that we're doing and proposing. Um, that was my change. Councilman Kavanaugh. So if I can chime back in now. So I, I think Councilman Dunnan's amendment helped tailored uh, the legislation to our city and to possible unintended consequences of, of the law, which I think was in a great and important piece. Councilman Hotchkiss's amendment uh, tempers the law a little bit, um, which I think is an important function and, and uh, adds a, a note of perhaps mercy and, and not, not taking law and punishment beyond the necessary, uh, the necessary threshold for it to work, and Councilwoman Matavetsky's or President Matavetsky's amendment uh, 
adds in an element of tracking and making sure that we take responsibility for the laws that we're passing, checking in on them, seeing how they're doing, and indeed giving us the opportunity if we need to, to uh, based on data, to tweak things in six months or or uh, in August, I think we'll get our first report. Um, so I, I think um, um, the police department and, and the mayor were, were sort of looked at a, a model that was working in Syracuse and says, Let, let's replicate that. And, and we know it's kind of an unchallenged working thing. Um, and I, I, I respect that perspective, but I think we have hopefully tailored this to our community a little bit better and given ourselves the opportunity to uh, look at it again in a, in a little, bit of, little bit of time and see how it's working, uh, which I think is something that has been lacking in this sort of local law that's been passed uh, in the past, um, which is uh, was one of my very original concerns when this was was uh, uh, was proposed. So I hope this is a a good model, and I I hope the mayor will uh, kind of. Uh, accept our changes because it has to get uh, it has to get approved uh, by him or go through a veto process, which will delay implementation. And I don't think we want to see that. I think we want to see this on the books as soon as possible uh, for the kind of ATV season now that the weather's getting nice. So um, that's my hope. And Thank you, Councilman Kavanaugh. Any further discussion? I'd like Councilman to, Hotchkiss. I'd like to make a motion to hold over the um, this resolution just so that we can finalize a couple of things with uh, the funding elements with youth programming. There's a okay. Motioned by Councilman Hotchkiss, seconded by Councilwoman Middleton. Um, I'll, um, do discussion? Discussion on the holdover. Can we not fix this tonight? As Council, uh, Councilman Hotchkiss indicated, we are doing real time, trying to find um, a budget <laughs> line that would work. Um, in doing that, um, he brought up a good point about um, in, uh, a prior section regarding impounded fees that I'd like to look into, like, as you said, to make sure we do it once and do it right. Um, certainly, I can try to do that now, but um, that I'll leave that up to Council's discretion. I, I think for the proper due diligence, yeah, I, I, co corporate counsel, we need to hold this over. Right. Yeah, I don't want to put I don't want to put corporate counsel on the spot. Yeah, we do want to do it right, but maybe maybe folks would be up for a special meeting before the next two weeks to get this moving because it does have to go to the state. So anyway, all right. With that, I would vote. So we need to vote on the holdover. Um, uh, roll call. Councilmember Porter? Aye. Councilmember Middleton? Aye. Councilmember Kavanaugh? Aye. Councilmember Dundon? Aye. Councilmember Costi? Aye. Councilmember Hotchkiss? Aye. Council President Medovetsky? Aye. 7 0. The motion to hold over passes. Okay. So next we have introductory ordinance 024 25 considered in employees. Councilmember Porter? Yes. Uh, this is the amenda for, I'm sorry, uh, the ordinance of 2425, uh, an ordinance to amend the 2024 fire budget to pay fire mechanic from fire budget moving from the CSEA union to the fire union effective 1 1 2024 with retroactive salary increase. Um, is there a second? I'll second. Motioned by Councilman Porter, seconded by Councilman Dundon. Jim? I don't have anything other than the person who just wants to want to get a better union. And so I, I feel <laughs> this is important. Okay. All right. So I have um, a letter from uh, uh, IAFF Local 729 Union President Dave Holleran. Um, Writes, uh, dear council president, thank you for reaching out. The IAFF Local 729 has been working with the city since mid last year on this collaborative effort. Our fire mechanic, who was represented by C the CSEA, was woefully underrepresented. The fire mechanic position is a vital part of our mission. It was acknowledged that the benefit package did not equal the responsibilities of our fire mechanic position after a job review and audit. 
Our mechanic is not only a diesel and gas engine mechanic, but also it, but is a fleet manager, which includes various other specialized knowledge and abilities. This, the position is also required to have knowledge and certifications to work on fire trucks. There's no other mechanic position in our city that is required to do so much. We worked with the city fire department officials and the CSEA union to first move his position to our bargaining unit. And then after much discussion and negotiations came up with a compensation and salary structure that was as closely agreeable and in alignment with the positions, values, and importance to the city and the fire department organization. IAFF Local 729 believes this agreement is as fair as a package that could be negotiated, keeping in mind the city's finances and other considerations. This agreement with the RL passage by city council will allow for retainment of our existing mechanic, hopefully for a long time, and when necessary, an adequate replacement. On a side note, our current mechanic, Lance Brinick, and his, and his abilities are second to none and deserves everything that is changing and more and combined appreciation and admiration for all that he does for our city of, uh, and department. I'd be happy to introduce you to him sometime. But IAFF Local 729 urges support and approval of this RL. We appreciate your time in this matter. Um, and they're open to answering questions. So I received that today or yesterday. Um, all right, anybody else want to speak before the clerk calls a roll? Clerk can call a roll. Councilmember Porter. Aye. Councilmember Middleton. Aye. Councilmember Kavanaugh. Aye. Councilmember Dundon. Aye. Councilmember Costi. Aye. Councilmember Hotchkiss. Aye. Council President Medovetsky. Aye. Seven zero. Thank you. The ordinance uh, passes. Next, we have introductory ordinance 024-26 considered in planning. Councilmember Hotchkiss. Like to Madam President, I need to call a point of order on this before oh. it gets read. I have to recuse myself as Gore Construction as the last contractor I work for for my union. But we, um, a vote. Would someone like to motion to have Council Member Dundon recuse him, recuse himself from this vote? I make a motion for okay. recusal. Second. And I second. Okay, motioned by Council Member. Order, seconded by Council Member Middleton. Um, a roll call. Council Member Porter. Aye. Council Member Middleton. Aye. Council Member Kavanaugh. Aye. Council Member Costi. Aye. Council Member Hotchkiss. Aye. Council President Medovetsky. Aye. So the recusal passes. All right. Um, so now to take a roll on the original motion, uh, which was. Uh, Ordinance. Oh, it wasn't introduced. Sorry. It was interrupted before it was introduced. So, Council Member Hotchkiss, <laughs> introduce, please. Uh, I'd make a motion to adopt introductory ordinance 024 26. This is an ordinance to amend the 20, 2024 budget for the demolition of the fire damage pro property at 122 Henry Street. I second. Seconded. Okay. Seconded by Council Member Porter. Um, discussion. Um, so, this is a uh, this was kind of a, a, an emergency demolition because the, the fire damage was, was really bad and it needed to get taken down quickly. And this is funds that are moving to, to pay for that demolition. Um, the only thing I have that I like remembered after the fact that Megan was, um, presenting on was, uh, this is moving to an insurance recovery line, but it seemed like the, uh, the funding was actually coming from a, a lawsuit settlement. Um, I didn't ever, I didn't ask for clarity because I thought about it after the fact, and I don't think it was that big of a deal, but I'm just making, making it noted. Kavanaugh. I, I, yeah, I, I'm planning to look into this uh, during budget season. I, I think this is the, at least the second time we've had to do this. Um, because the money for these demolitions is budgeted. And then when we think we're going to get it back from an insurance recovery, we move the money, we move it into this other line. 
And I, I don't, I, I'd like to find a better way to do it because it's, this is just kind of annoying. Like we budgeted the money for this. We know what it's costing, but it, it, it's kind of an accounting necessity to move it around. So I, I'm, I'm going to try and figure out if there's a better way to, to, to streamline this or to put a certain amount in what we've historically have gotten from insurance recoveries uh, when this happens. So. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. The clerk can call the roll. Councilmember Porter. Aye. Councilmember Middleton. Aye. Councilmember Cavanaugh. Aye. Councilmember Dundon. Oh, excuse me. Excuse. Councilmember Costi. Aye. Councilmember Hotchkiss. Aye. Council President Matavetsky. Aye. Six zero. Okay. The uh, ordinance uh, passes. Um, next, we have introductory resolution R24. Dash 24, considered in finance. Council member Kavanaugh. I'd like to make a motion to pass introductory ordinance uh, R24-24, a uh, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter, an, enter into an agreement with Harding Brooks Agency for the city uh, uh, to act as our workers' compensation insurance broker. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion by Councilman Kavanaugh, seconded by Councilman Middleton. Discussion? I'll just Kavanaugh. I'll just quickly reiterate. We uh, got pitches from several insurance companies, uh, or insurance brokers rather. Um, these folks offer uh, a, a an expanded suite of services uh, for the city to use to um, help uh, help with training and streamlining work in, workers comp workers comp uh, claims and make them efficient for the city. Um, and it's uh, it should be a, an improvement over the uh, the broker we've been using in the past and. Uh, uh, Kent will be keeping an eye on that uh, going forward, and uh, I urge passage. Thank you. Um, I have um, the clerk is looking up uh, the names of everyone who sponsored it. It didn't make. There's a typo in the. So um, and yes, again, just kind of reiterating I, what I said in the work session on this. Um, I actually called all the. Um, references that were, were included in the in the original work session work packet and uh, everyone was very pleased with this company um so very seems good um so i'm going to let the clerk call the roll um knowing that this was signed out there's just a, a typo in the in the packet council member porter aye council member middleton aye council member Kavanaugh. aye council member dundon aye Councilmember Costi? Aye. Councilmember Hotchkiss? Aye. Council President Matavetsky? Aye. That is 7 0. Okay. The resolution passes. Okay. Um, so thank you to everyone who came out tonight. Um, and uh, we can now move on to Councilmember comments. So um, we'll start with uh, District 7. We'll start with Councilman Dundon. Yeah, so um, there's going to be a Eliza Spencer blessing box and good neighbors that present the Eliza Spencer free food giveaway on Saturday, March 4th from 1 to 2 p.m. at the Hands of Hope Church on 270 Robinson Street. Um, Eliza Spencer was a girl that was killed on the streets of the east side around two years ago. And I know one of the public speakers talked about, you know, anytime one, excuse me, one child dies, that's one too many. Well, we had one in our backyard that nobody has any idea about it. There's nothing coming out from the Binghamton Police Department. And as far as I, my understanding, the family just knows it to be an unsolved murder. So hopefully anybody can, um, if anybody wants to volunteer, you can get a hold of me. Um, if not, anybody who needs, you know, food or hygienic products, please come out. Thank you. 1 to 2 p.m.? So I won't actually be there Saturday, seeing it's my birthday, but I'm doing all the setting up the night before. <laughs> That's right. Oh. <laughs> um, Council Member Costi. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, I hope at this point we can move on to some local government and uh, making some change in the area. Um, also, I just want to let everyone know I got my email and I'll be getting my phone this week, so anyone in my district, if you have any questions, concerns, please shoot me an email, shoot me a call. Um, yeah, thank you again. You, uh, Council Member Hotchkiss. Uh, I wish everybody was still here. Um, 
uh, I, I just want to thank everybody that came out. I know there was a lot of comments regarding um, affordable housing, and I think there was probably the the perception that we would be voting to um, fund the the Southern Door Community Land Trust um, project at at Six Florence Ave. Um, so as we found out on Monday, the the money that we thought was available in the ARPA fund is not there and it's actually been overspent. And I think that's, um, it's extremely disappointing to me because I was looking forward to, to getting that project going and getting the Southern Door Community Land Trust, their first um, uh, project and housing development on the books so that they could, it could serve as a as a model for for future developments um where I, I i'm still committed to to trying to figure out how to how to get funding for that specifically um just yeah i mean i think it's worth like highlighting the um kind of a timeline of events uh it, it's useful for me so uh, about a month ago we received the the uh the comptroller's records of what was where ARPA has went. Um, and at that time, it seemed like there would be enough money to fund that project. Um, after, the, after the project was presented and um, we it came to council, there was the, this notion that the, the reporting for ARPA would be the, the hurdle that would hold this up. Um, I think Dominique and Hashra met with Dr. Burling, who didn't think that was an issue at all and was kind of frustrated that it was it was brought up to begin with. Um, and lastly, it, the, it's just like the money isn't there or we're being told that it's not there. So it's, it's a frustrating place that we're in. Um, I'm looking forward to introducing more uh, housing laws and that have been implemented in other municipalities or are are going through the the state right now, but I think I, I would encourage everybody to just keep coming back. Um, I think it, it, it's it's motivating to have people um, kind of kind of nudging you through this process, uh, and it's it, it's also very grounding for me. Um, what else do I want to say? I, I think the I, I spent a lot of time. I still spend a lot of time thinking about um, our housing issues and some of the really staggering numbers that we're looking at. I think it's something like. It, it, it's it's like impossible numbers for as far as funding is concerned um that came out of the the uh the broom county housing assessment study um so we have to we need to be engaged more than like the city of binghamton isn't gonna just fund its way through this pro this this whole thing we have to do a lot of creative thinking and we got to think outside the box and i think that includes uh having community members involved with with our, our problem solving. So um, keep coming back and please uh, stay engaged. And that's all I have for now. Thanks. Thank you. Council Member Kavanaugh. Uh, I, I will defer to Councilwoman uh, Middleton uh, to reannounce our upcoming uh, neighborhood uh, assembly, uh, which I'm very excited about um, to get one reestablished on the west side. Um, we will. I will continue through the uh, through the finance committee to uh, press for some resolution to the uh, a more detailed accounting for from for the uh, the ARPA money that we are we are all concerned with. Uh, I already asked Chuck at work session to please uh, get a uh, get that uh, that particular portion of of the financials uh, in order uh, for us. Uh, quickly, and I will reiterate that tomorrow at the Finance Committee meeting. Um, as far as other district announcements, um, the Bundy Museum is now sponsoring a comedy open mic, and if you don't know, I love stand-up comedy, and there's now a open mic the first Tuesday of every month there. Um, so the Bundy is uh, going through some some pains, and I, I, I want to keep it as a, as a part of our uh, our community fabric as a as a as a programming space uh, as a cultural resource, and uh, so this is one element of, of trying to get more people in there and and functioning and uh, and I'm excited that we have some live comedy uh, consistently on the west side again. So it's been a while. So 
come on down for that uh, first Tuesdays. Uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna be the first Tuesday of every month, I believe. Uh, sign ups are six thirty and it starts at seven. So we they just had the inaugural one last week. So um, who knows? I might even get a yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. Please, please. yeah that's what I wanted exactly. to hear. Is when are you getting up on stage? <laughs> All right. If I ever if I ever plan it, I'll announce it here. All right. Uh, and again, uh, thank everyone for for coming out and uh, getting through uh, the. Uh, the process uh, with with the uh, ceasefire resolution, uh, it's really been uh, a lesson in uh, community engagement and uh, um, how city council uh, can function. Anyway, yep. thanks. Woman Middleton. Um, well, I just wanted to reiterate what Rob said. Sorry, I'm. I don't know what, how I, I feel weird, but um, April twenty fifth. I think that's a Thursday at six thirty. We will be having our West Side uh, neighborhood meeting. Um, come out, talk to me and Rob, um, and we'll have some snacks. I always need snacks for everything, but <laughs> yes, yes. So we'll have some snacks. Come talk to us. Um, uh, I one of my campaign uh, slogans, and I live by that every day, is better together. Um, we just all represent seven districts of Binghamton. But it, we are just the representatives. Every single person here um, definitely helps us, gives us a clear mind and different ideas because, like I said, we're just representatives. Each and every person bring, uh, bring your ideas to us so that way we can collectively grow as a community. Um, I, I think, like, after... After the meeting and every time I speak, I always like try to get a message on like what the meeting means to me and what the month and everything. But today to me, it was about a humanitarian. Um, I was so proud of the young boy that came and young man, excuse me, that came and spoke um, today. I, you know, we don't realize that um, being homeless, it's so many different dynamics, you know, it, it they all are in the same. So, you know, we need to start realizing that. I also want to say that we at city council are very passionate about finding solutions um, to help people. And, you know, even, you know, we were all shocked on Monday when we found out that there wasn't any ARPA funds. Um, <laughs> crazy. It's wild. But um, we were definitely all shocked by that, that there weren't any ARPA funds. Well, actually we weren't, but Oh yeah, we no, we were just we were just shocked that it was it was so much. We weren't we weren't shocked, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, we are still uh, we are still committed to helping and serving the people of Binghamton. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate, you know, I I am sorry for getting up, but to like calm it down. But I uh, I think like I said, there's a time and place for everything and dignity and order and everyone has their five minutes to speak. And, you know, you can, we've had people come up here and say things that they don't like about us and we just have to deal with it because that's part, that's a part of the government, but also we have to be respectful to each other. So, you know, like we had some people who didn't, who didn't agree with the ceasefire, but they are being very disrespectful and we can't have that. There has to be some type of order. And so, um, that's all I want to say. I hope you guys all come out, not just for this, but I hope you guys all come out to every single city council um, meeting. Some of you do already, but come out. <laughs> it's come, it's coming, it's coming, girl, it's coming. But yes, yeah, usually we're not this late, but please come out and um, make your voices heard because that's what local government's about. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Porter. Um. Okay. I want to apologize for my behavior. Uh, uh, it was a little, maybe a little off. So, but I'm passionate about being a humanitarian. I'm passionate about trying to do right. So that comes out. Um, I want to say that uh, I wasn't able to attend the first ward uh, neighborhood watch meeting yesterday. I have been attending. I will continue to attend. Uh, this is an important way to connect with other people in the community. Um, even though I might have felt that some biases may portray for property homeowners against tenants rather than going against slumlords that, that tend to create situations. 
uh, for poor poor individuals. Uh, so I do ask people to come out to it. If the pool, if I were I would ask, please, please show up to this thing, please, because uh, it is very necessary. It's second Tuesday of every month at Woodrow Wilson. They open the doors at six and they start at six fifteen. Please show up. Please, the people of the first ward in the community, uh, Oak Street, please show up. Uh, uh, Winding Way, please show up. Baxter, please show up. So that you can say what you need to say. So that you can hear the words that are coming out of some of these people's mouths. And then you can have a, a nice, healthy debate, if possible. I support free and fair housing. I support affordable housing, which is needed in this community. And I'm, I'm committed to showing up for everyone. So um, please come out, uh, try to keep me sane. Uh, and uh, again, I wanna thank all y'all coming out even the people that oppose me, even when they had, I, opposition is just as well needed, just the same as as uh, an agreement. And we have to be somewhat understanding of that, even if it is sometime against your fiber of being. Um, so thank y'all, and I appreciate y'all. Uh, God bless you, good night. Okay, thank you, Councilman Porter. Um, for District 5, um, Southside Neighborhood Assembly has a scheduled neighborhood cleanup uh, April 20th from 9 a.m. to noon. Um, so that's a, a Southside cleanup. And um, there's going to be, you know, the details should be on the Southside Neighborhood Assembly Facebook page. That Neighborhood Assembly is for um, both, I guess, 5th and 6th as the way um, things were redistricted. Um, they are also looking to uh, schedule a, a monthly meeting. The date hasn't been uh, finalized. Um, so please watch their Facebook page for that. Um, April, uh, there's a, a pre-admission day coming up uh, at on April 19th uh, for uh, Discovery Center, Southern Tier, um, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., April 19th. Um, I saw the news earlier today that the CVS on Penn Ave is closing. Um, so another blow to services, um, and, um, just, we'll be <laughs> talking to our, uh, municipal and public affairs chair, <laughs> Kenny Middleton over here, um, to, to get some discussions going on, um, losing services in different areas. Um, I want to finish with, uh, something nice. Um, yesterday, the weather was beautiful. Hopefully people got outside. Um, I, after going to, uh, the public library for a public meeting that the city put on, uh, I grabbed some, some food, took, got some takeout with my family and went to, um, Southside Commons, uh, which is technically in the sixth. Um, there, uh, was some different people hanging around in there. Um, and I, I just, I, it was a very positive experience. I uh, interact, there was some, some youth that saw my small kids and were like, I could hear the one telling the other saying like, hey, they're small kids, like watch your language. And like, it was just like kind of all of us being and sharing a, a common space and like being happy to be around each other. There was a gentleman that was sipping his beverage and singing tunes. Um, and then there was this guy, um, that my, that was, was, was there. He turned on his music again. He saw that I had small kids with me. Um, and he put on kid friendly music, um, and took out his gloves and started cleaning up the commons. I went over and talked to him and, um, he pointed up to something that I hadn't 
really taken much time to reflect on, which was um, Hannigan's Heroes. It's it's a list of people that served in in wars and um, including those that that passed. Um, and he said, you know, basically one of the most beautiful moments of patriotism that I've seen real genuine, you know, just this guy putting on his gloves, cleaning up a memorial. Um, and uh, I don't know I found it very inspiring and I thought I would share. So thank you. He didn't share his name with me, um, but uh, thank you for, for cleaning up. All right. Um, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Oh, I'll motion. Sorry. Motion by Councilwoman Middleton, seconded second. by 